Drivers to your cars, please. All drivers to your cars now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to say the three most famous words in NASCAR racing, the chairman of the board, our Charlotte Motor Speedway, Bruton Smith. Gentlemen, start your engines!
Boston, ladies and gentlemen, please move back away from the fence to your seat. Immediately, please. Move back away from the fence, ladies and gentlemen. Immediately, please take your seat. You're delaying the start. Please move back away from the fence immediately, please. That is some three miles per hour off the record for this track, established in 1980. And we'll look at that story after these messages on the Performance Racing Network. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen, move back away from the fence immediately, please. Take your seat in the grandstand area. Please move back away from the fence immediately. Move back away from the fence, ladies and gentlemen, immediately, please. Sight. Coming from turn one to turn two here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway this afternoon. Leading the pack, of course, the Ford Mustang pace cars. On that front row with Buddy Baker and Bill Elliott. And this the 24th running of the Charlotte Motor Speedway's World 600, the premier event on the NASCAR Grand National Circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to have you here this afternoon. Daniel Matthews down three miles an hour from the record and trying so hard. Everyone here, why are they slowing? Well, one back straight. Down the back stretch coming into turn three. 600 miles. Here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, 400 laps. Pace cars coming into the pit road. Charlotte Motor Speedway, of course, the 24th running of the World 600 this afternoon. Buddy Baker, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt feeling his suspension out. Chattanooga Chew with David Pearson, Joe Russman, Neil Potter, Harry Jan, Benny Parsons, Dick Brooks, Ricky Rudd, leading that front row pack of 10. Feeling their way across this track. Of course, a welcome afternoon in the fact that the sun is not beating down as it did yesterday. A very slick track for the Mellow Yellow 300 running here yesterday at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Combined with a harder competition of tires today, that could cause even more of a problem. Combine that with the incentive to stay ahead with the lap leader money. $50,000 posted for the lap leader money. That additional incentive to stay ahead all during the race to keep this long, enduring race at its absolute peak. This is Bill Dollar. It was a pleasure to be with you this morning in the free race activity here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, he joined the Performance Racing Network with Ken Squire. Hey, sorry, he's going down now off the banking of turn number four, and we're going back to the tower for a start. Ladies and gentlemen, as the crowd stands to give that final ovation, 40 cars moving to the line, and the 24th annual half million dollar World 600 is underway. Going to turn number one. Three wide, though, for the battle for second. It is Earnhardt on the inside. Neil Bonnet's there, so is Pearson. Now, Bill Elliott has dropped, picked all the way back into the sixth spot. Earnhardt goes to the bottom for a quick lead. It'll drop Buddy Baker to second. Bonnet third, down the back chute. Flying forwards of Dale Earnhardt. Now, here comes Strong in the second-place car of Buddy Baker up in the high group. But Earnhardt has the lead right down at the bottom of the racetrack in turn number four. Coming up strong on the inside is Neil Bonnet. Riding third is Baker. The Wrangler car out in front. It is Earnhardt in front, Bonnet in second, Baker in third, Benny Parsons fourth, Pearson dropping to fifth. In sixth is Ricky Rudd, seventh is Bill Elliott, riding in the eighth spot is Joe Rutman. Back there in ninth would be the Tim Richmond automobile in a real battle for tenth as they head off the number two corner and down that back chute. Point car is still Earnhardt, down by three car lengths now, out front of Bonnet who scoots in close as he closes in turn number three. Here's Benny Parsons now riding third, Bakers drop back to the fourth spot and then Pearson rides number five off turn four. In that 10th spot is Bobby Allison, 11th is the Harry Gant car, in 12th is Darrell Walton, and 13th is Cale Yarborough with 14th as they stream back into the first turn area, number 90, Richard Brooks. A real battle, though, for 14th spot, Terry Labonte is there in the 15th position, 16th, Jeff Bodai, 17th, Richard Petty, 18th would be Kyle Petty. Out of turn two, they're moving high against the wall, early down that back chute. Some smoke out of car number 47, Bouchard, as he goes down the back straightaway, field in turn three. Two-car duo out front by 10-car links over third and fourth spot. Parsons drops down now, still holding on to third. In fourth is Baker, fifth, Elliott, sixth, Pearson. Three laps complete. It is Earnhardt in front. Bonnet establishing himself in second. 20 car lengths back to the third place battle. Down in turn one, there's about two by two. Maybe a dozen automobiles battling in this 17 degree banking. Buddy Baker has broke loose in third. Benny Parsons is in fourth. Fifth is Bill Elliott. And a battle for fifth between Elliott and Yarbrough with Joe Rutman in that draft. And what a battle that is going into that third turn. About five automobiles clustered in. Here's Elliott moving in to take over the fifth spot. Pearson bump back to six. Joe Rutman rides. Seventh off the high bank, turn four. As they come by, it is Earnhardt in command with four of 400 laps complete. Are the battle for the lead at turn one? It is Bonnet down on the inside. Earnhardt goes high. He loves to run. Yesterday, Dale was way down low. Today, he's running right up in that racing group. Bonnet tucks it in single file out of turn number two. Earnhardt still leads down the back stretch. But the candy apple red, white, and gold number 75 of Neil Bonnet is right there glued to the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt in that beautiful yellow and blue number 15 Ford Thunderbird engineered by Bud Moore. Still with the lead. Back in third. Ten cars back. Buddy Baker. A lot of smoke coming out of that Ron Bouchard car as he comes back into turn number one with the leader's body is tucked right in on Earnhardt's bumper. Something to miss on David Pearson. Seven cars, eight cars going by, and Bouchard shows a lot more smoke as they go down into turns one and two. Bouchard has dropped off the pace, and Pearson dropped back about six, seven. He's still dropping back by you, Bill Canal, at turn two. A lot of dicing by Pearson. A very hairy move down that back straightaway. They're scooping into turn three. Right now, still back to the point. It's Earnhardt, but we'll watch Pearson, who drops low on the apron of turn three. He may be coming into the pits this time. Right behind him, the smoking car of number 47, of Bouchard. First is Earnhardt. Second is Bonnet. Third is Baker. Fourth, it is Bill Elliott. And Elliott is going for third at the first turn. Elliott's down on the inside of Buddy Baker. He's a giant that's won this event. Four. Michael Jones, Michael Jones, go to gate eight, please. Michael Jones, go to gate eight in the back straightaway. And right now it is Bill Elliott challenging for third spot. Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, puts his Thunderbird nose out front of Buddy Baker, takes over third spot, bumps Baker back to fourth, riding fifth is Joe Rutman in sixth place, belongs to Benny Bars and smoking tires off four. So those are the front six automobiles. Benny Parsons in six, in seventh is Tim Richmond, up to eighth is Kaylee Arborough, ninth is Bobby Allison, tenth is Darrell Waltrip, and moving very slowly around the track, down by you, Bill Connell, David Pearson. He came out of the pits, looks like he got no service, just poking it very, very, something critical is wrong with Pearson's automobile. He slowed down the backstretch now and heading around the three and four. 
We're watching him this time. It looks like he is dropping down to the apron and will return. So the Silver Fox from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and the Chattanooga Two Car with big trouble. Chuck Young standing by of David Pearson's pits. Eight laps are now completed of the 400 to be run. Elliott has moved under Baker. He is in third, and he's going after the leaders. Big bundle of cars fighting for the sixth position at Bill Connell's location, turn one. Tim Richards right at Tim Richmond in the thicket there. Kale Yarborough along with Bobby Allison, Darrell Waltrip, Benny Parsons is way up against the wall, and that thicket continues down the backstretch. Let's go quickly to Chuck Young in on the pit road. Well, David Pearson just got the car refired, um, and we're not exactly sure. Ricky and Larry Pearson are across the wall. They're checking inside the car. It appears to be ignition problems at this time. A brake problem. They're saying now it is a brake problem. So they're working on the brakes of the Chattanooga 2 machine. Ken, I'll get back to the further report. Joe Rutman has just moved around and taken fourth position away from Buddy Baker, drop kicking him back to fifth. Big battle going on for six. Now that back straightaway, Bobby Allison and Kale Yarborough. Yarborough to the outside, Allison on the inside there in three. Yarborough passes in the high group, takes over Bobby Allison's spot. He rides six now. Allison seventh, eighth place to Darrell Waltham. As they come back to the line, Earnhardt is in front. Bill Elliott is closing on the leaders. He's right up behind Bonnet. That's the battle for second. Fourth is Rutman. Fifth is Baker. And wheel to wheel, Bobby Allison fights his way down into turn number one in that sixth place scramble. Up the hub. It's still Allison down on the inside. Yarborough upstairs and right behind. Him is Darrell Walter along with Tim Richmond. There goes the battle for second down the backstretch. Let's get a quick report from Chuck Young on pit road as to the condition of David Pearson's car. Larry Pearson, what have you done to the brakes on David's car? Oh, the right front tire. Brakes was locked up on the rudder was on fire. So evidently the right front brake just locked up on him. So you've got it all squared away and everything's all right to the best of your knowledge. Yeah, it seems to be okay now. Okay, that's the report from the Chattanooga Shoe Pit. Elliott is trying to get underneath the Neil Bonnet car as they head down the back straightaway. And there's a three-car battle down that back stretch. Also, Elliott battling with Neil Bonnet, but back in the pack is Yarborough, Allison, and Waltrip, an unreal show. H.B. Bailey pitting his car. Battle for six. Cale Yarborough is now there. Waltrip goes to seventh. Allison is back to eighth. Earnhardt is leading. Coming by to complete 13 of 400 laps. Earnhardt first. Elliott second. Bonnet third. Rutman in fourth. Baker in fifth. It's Cale Yarborough six. Waltrip in seventh. Bobby Allison eighth as they go to the first turn. Tim Richmond is in the ninth spot. In the 10th position would be Terry Labonte. Riding 11th is Harry Gant. 12th is Ricky Rudd. 13th, Richard Petty. In the 14th spot is Kyle Petty. Riding 15th, Dick Brooks down the back chute. 160 mile an hour average in the first 10 laps. 160.237 miles per hour. And Ron Bouchard is back on pit road another time early in this World 600. When I go out and practice in a car the first time at Talladega, I come back in and think about how the car ran, how it felt. You're listening to the Wrangler brand's Dale Earnhardt. We can pretty much make the adjustments by... Friends here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, you may not be aware that there is a race within a race, the World 600, between the pit crews of top ten qualified cars. The winner of this special competition will be the team whose car finishes the race with the least total of time on pit road. The winning team earns $2,500, points toward a $40,000 a year in point fund posted by the sponsoring Ingersoll Rand Company manufacturers of Ingersoll Rand Power Tools and Proto Hand Tools. The teams who are competing in today's fourth round of the Ingersoll Rand Proto Pit Crew Championship are listed in the lineup insert of the Souvenir Magazine here at the World 600 today. Bright red banners on pit wall mark the pit areas of the 10 competing crews. Dale Earnhardt on the outside, coming from turn three into turn four. Around the number nine car, Bill Elliott fighting for that lead. Out of turn four into the dog leg, and it's side by side. Dale Earnhardt across the stripe first. Joe Ruffin in third, and Neil Bonnet in the fourth position. They are working the 15th lap. We'll be back after the 60-second announcement. This is the Performance Racing Network. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the running of the 24th annual World 600. We're so proud to have you a part of it. Dale Earnhardt, the Canapolis kid, now the resident of Lake Norman, taking back the lead that he gained early in the race from the very beginning. Hard fighting on the rear in his draft, of course, is Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia. Across the stripe once again to that 15th lap to 16th is Neil Bonnet, of course, coming up behind and fourth slot behind Joe Rutman. The number 27 car, Tim Richmond, is smoking. Tim Richmond's got trouble going into turn one. 
No cautions out this moment. Apparently no spilled oil. But Tim Richmond, there is the caution flag. Harold Kinder, Kinder drops the caution flag. Tim Richmond is apparently at this moment going to be out of the race with trouble. Barely under his own power. And now back to the Performance Racing Network. Today is out as Tim Richmond's engine erupts coming out of turn number four. He came down across the start finish line, and the old Milwaukee car is now limping around the track. Richmond blowing an engine at the 15th lap. As the field came by, they completed that lap. They are now into another lap. Up to 16 complete on the board. Lap 15 is where the caution mark is being shown for the first time today. Richmond very slow down on the bottom of the track at turn three. Bill Elliott showing a lot of thrust in car number nine today. Six second place finishes, a brilliant second place at Daytona back in February in the 500. And here today, he is considered one of the strongest of the dark horses. And many of the experts say this will not be a race that will be taken by the old guard. Standing by is Chuck Young waiting on that car number uh, 27, the old Milwaukee machine. Everybody pitting but Bobby Allison. He'll inherit the lead. All the leaders coming into 15. Petty stays out. He'll move into second. Pearson is out, still on the track. Now remember, he was in there, and there was a valve cover problem on car number 47, Ron Bouchard's machine. That was the report on Ron Bouchard. And the car of Tim Richmond has barely made pit road and is coming to a halt just at the entrance to pit road. The field is working the 18th lap at the present time. And thus far in the race, we had some extremely good speed, but the car that seemed the fastest on the track, Banjo Matthews, was the Bill Elliott car. Yeah, he was really working at it. I saw him get underneath Earnhardt one time to get wiggling, so he intends on leading the race. Well, now he'll come as they swap positions around in this first pit stop period, still working the 18th lap. Caution it is after a blown engine and nothing more dire. Extremely serious, however, for Tim Richmond, who really wanted to have a good day here, and many felt that he needed it here today. So the old Milwaukee car still just barely moving along pit road at about three miles an hour, far off that 160 mile an hour average that all the leaders were following before that caution flag came out. Richmond out of competition today, a bad break for Richmond. Field is ready to take green again as they come down to complete the 23rd lap, 34 and a half miles into the World 600. And Bobby Allison is out in front in the Miller Highlight car as they go to turn one, putting another lap on David Pearson. Cut to the inside as they go into the first turn. It is Bobby Allison in command of the World 600. Riding second is Ken Reagan and a good run for this youngster very early in the event. In third is Bob Seneker and riding fourth, Dave Marcus. James Hilton is in the fifth spot. That will change rather rapidly midway down the back stretch. And right now on the charge back there is Dale Waltrip in that car number 11. He pulls up and is trying to take over second spot, but Allison is out to a good lead, still riding second. Ken Reagan as they pull it down off the deep part of four. David Pearson is being reported as three laps down. Pearson is shown as three laps down. Here is Waltrip beginning to cut through traffic as he moves to Bill Canal at turn one. Waltrip should be in the second spot right now because Pearson's in, in uh, trying to get one of those laps back just in front of Bobby Allison. Waltrip should be second. Ruttman should be third. Earnhardt fourth. Yarborough fifth. Midway down the backstretch. Bobby Allison has now found himself behind David Pearson, who did get that lap back, and he's just behind Pearson midway through turns three and four. It's Reagan, though, still behind Allison. Waltrip looks to be third. Back in the fourth spot is Ruttman. Ron Bouchard has been black flagged another time. Still in front is Allison. The number 97 car hangs on to that second spot. And what a run Ken Reagan has been making in the going here. A uh, new name. Black flag out on Bouchard showing a lot of smoke as he crosses the line with 24 laps complete. And Pearson has his problem solved with the brakes, and he's running right with the leader. Bobby Allison in the Miller High Life car going down to Hill Overton at turn three. Allison running like gangbusters, but so is Pearson trying to stay out front as they scoot one, two down the back chute. Of course, Pearson uh, doing a lap in the distance down. Now making his move down the front. Double dog leg is Waltrip. He's on the charge. Ken Reagan getting overwhelmed by six competitors going down into the first turn. And here is Waltrip into that second position and looking very strong. Waltrip 
beginning to show some muscle out here. He held back to that first caution. Now he's going for it. Out of turn number two, Walter is on his own back there in the second spot. A battle for third between Earnhardt, Joe Rudman, and Cale Yarbrough. And look at Earnhardt with his foot in it as he gets down inside of Rudman. Here comes Yarbrough now. Yarbrough wants to take over a spot from Rudman. He battles him coming off the floor and has him by a nose off that turn four. Coming by, Alice. The seventh position. Buddy Baker 8. What a run for Lake Speed. He's right there in that battle of four cars. Yarbrough with a nose kind of sandwiched between the Bill Elliott automobile and Joe Rudman. A real battle between Terry Labonte and Neil Bonnet for the tip position. As they're midway down the back chute, Labonte trying to take the inside road, but Bonnet will have nothing to do with that as he scoots out to a three-car length advantage at the base of turn three and four. 27 laps complete as they come by. Bobby Allison's white red numeral car in front. Then it is Waltrip in second, Earnhardt third. Yarborough fourth and down on the inside. Bill Elliott moves under Rutman trying to take that fifth spot. He is there. Rutman is up high on the racetrack. Lake Speed has really got a tremendous car that's handling down low on the bottom of the apron. He's still door to door down the back chute with Rutman and he puts the power on. And Rutman gets around speed as he moves up toward the back bumper of the Bill Elliott Thunderbird as some raindrops are falling here in the turn four area. Rain held up. It had a little spattering of showers about 11 o'clock this morning. Now, once again, some showers circulating the area. They said there was a frontal system that might move by this afternoon. Now, there's car number 88, the Dygar, rather the Cliff Stewart car, Jeff Bodine in that machine, moving up through two automobiles. He gets by that number 97 of Ken Reagan as he clears turn one. Out in front. 29 laps complete when they come by this time. Allison is first. And closing ground is Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip moving up on the leader. Darrell Waltrip, who won this race back-to-back, -back, then was defeated in 1980. Catch by Bill, Bill Cannell in turn number one. Waltrip is waving out his window like he wants him to throw a caution. Indeed, there's several, apparently, that all feel the same way. What about it, Hill Overton? What kind of weather have you got down there in three and four? We're seeing raindrops falling. Nothing severe at this point, but I would think an accumulation of drops of this size would certainly start making their effect felt on the speedway. So we'll keep you posted here as Bobby Allison drops low right at the base of turn three. Scoots up about a lane now. Here's Pearson still tagging on. Of course, he did lose that left back in second spot now as Dale Earnhardt in the Wrangler car. Earnhardt moving under Waltrip, who falls to third. Yarborough is fourth. Elliott is fifth. Rutman six, speed is seventh, Bonnet is eight, going in the ninth position, Buddy Baker. And right behind Buddy Baker is the tenth position automobile of Terry Labonte. Riding in eleventh would be that of Jeff Bodine, twelfth is Harry Gant, thirteenth would be Ricky Rudd, fourteenth Kyle Petty, and fifteenth is the dad, Richard Petty. That is the 30-lap rundown with 30 laps complete. And we'll be back with more from the Charlotte Motor Speedway's World 600 after we pause for station identification and these messages join you again in 70 seconds. Here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, this is Bill Dollar, and just to remind you that as we go through the race, the 400 laps, lap leader money, a total of $50,000. And as we approach 100 laps, of course, we'll be announcing who's going to be leading at that time. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the scene of the 24th World 600. And don't forget the last weekend in October, October 29th, the first of the series of three as they become from the National 500 to the Miller 500. The Miller 500 this October the 29th when the race will be sponsored in full by the Miller Brewing Company here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Thirty-second lap. Bobby Allison, still in that lead for the moment, taking it after that pit stop with Tim Richmond had that oil trouble in his car and the engine blew a while ago. And apparently, Bobby Allison taking advantage with that Diegard Racing Team, able to get him into the pits and getting him out quickly. And taking advantage of a situation to put him in the lead once again here for the 24th World 600 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, followed by Dale Earnhardt and uh, David Pearson, a close battle between uh, Darrell Waltrip at the moment, right behind David Pearson. And I think now we go back to the Performance Racing Network. A small cell of showers just over to the east of the speedway at the present time. 
and apparently one shower has circulated by the track and did not fall on it, which was a blessing. Now the question is, can they get this race in? There are showers in the area, no question about that. 34th lap complete as they come by, and as they do. Bobby Allison in, is in front, but he is being run down by Dale Earnhardt. At the moment, Bobby Allison has everybody covered, but Dale Earnhardt is gaining ground as they go to Bill Cannell at turns one and two. The real battle, though, is back in third. Yarbrough is down on the inside. Waltrip up high. Pearson is right in front of those automobiles, and Bill Elliott tucked in to make it a four-car pack into the back chute heading for three. And Cale Yarbrough has been chewing away at that number 11 of Darrell Waltrip, and right now, except for the slower traffic, looks like he's going to have trouble. He has a nose out in front, down at the base of turn number three. Now into turn four, they move door to door as they're behind David Pearson in four. 35 laps complete, 35 complete. Allison first, Earnhardt second. Third spot goes to Waltrip, and fourth to Yarborough with fifth to Elliott. Then back six, three seconds back, it is Neil Bonnet, and he has a lot of competition on his tail, Bill Connell. He certainly does. Right behind him is Joe Rutman, then Terry Labonte, Harry Gant, Jeff Bodine, Ricky Rudd, Kyle Petty, Richard Petty, Lake Speed, and there's Buddy Baker. Seven, eight cars right behind that thicket for the fourth and fifth place. There is a $5,000 bonus for the car leading on the 67th lap. I'm sure they're not considering that too much right now as they look up at the skies and become a little concerned about the weather. That shower that started to spot the third and fourth turn looks like it totally abated Hill Overton. What's the story? It's not 100% abated at this point because I feel the droplets of moisture on my bare arms at this point, but right now it isn't sufficient enough at all. It will not stop the racing if it remains as is. So let's keep our fingers crossed that things stay just as they are as these cars don't seem to be affected. But right now being affected is Bobby Allen because reeling him in rapidly now as Dale Earnhardt off of four. Surging back towards the lead comes the Wrangler car. Number 15, the Bud Moore machine, is ready to tackle Bobby Allison at turn one. Outside goes Earnhardt, upstairs. Yesterday he was downstairs. Allison closes the door on him, boxes him out of turn number two. They both come high to the outside wall. Earnhardt, you could throw a blanket between he and Allison. He may be going to move in the back chute. Foot to the far wall is Dale Earnhardt in that beautiful yellow and gold. Earnhardt's tried to win this thing. The crowd coming to their feet as Earnhardt challenges on the inside, about to run into lap traffic in the 39th lap at turn one. It's going to play a heavy factor on Dale's move because both Bobby and Dale have to go upstairs out of turn number two, getting by the Bill Duffy automobile. They're coming up on J.D. McDuffie. Midway down the back stretch, Allison breaks it by a car lift. And shooting up alongside the Grand Sam Hall is a half a car length now. They're going into the turn a little bit deeper. It's Bobby Allison in the Miller car this time. He puts the Buick right down to the bottom of the race track. and the two-time winner of the world, 600 stays in front. Earnhardt, whose best finish, 1979 third, chases him again into the first turn. That's where the key battle is, but also, Darrell Walker has his hands full at turn one. Walker just closed the door on Cale Yarborough. Single file, they go out of turns one into turn number two, head down the back. Gann is almost boxed up against the wall in a battle between he and David Pearson and lap car. Coming around to complete 40 laps this time as they come by. Here's Earnhardt taking another stab at first place. Allison has him covered. Down they come with Allison first at the end of 40 laps. In that second spot, it is Dale Earnhardt. Third is Bill Elliott. Fourth is Waltrip. Fifth is Yarborough. Sixth is the Skull Bandit, Harry Gant. Going seventh is Neil Bonnet. Right behind Bonnet is that three-lap down automobile of David Pearson, the Chattanooga Chew entry. Then would be the car of Joe Rutman, followed by Jerry Labonte and Jeff Bodine. That Rutman car run in the eighth position. Labonte is running in the ninth position. Bodine in tenth with Kyle Petty in eleventh and his father Richard Petty in twelfth. That's at 40 laps. As they come by, it is wheel to wheel for the lead going to turn one. They get by Buddy Eric at three wide. Coming out of that trioval, Earnhardt goes way downstairs. He gets Allison. Allison drops behind him by Buddy Errington. Still some lap traffic. Going to play a factor out of turn two as they move into that back straightaway. Allison comes down on the bottom of the racetrack. He'll challenge Earnhardt. Cabarrus County Deputy, Cabarrus County Deputy, go to the hospital, please. Cabarrus County Deputy, go to the hospital. Number three, but look at Earnhardt, slipping just a little bit, getting good side fight. He pulls his car down now. They're almost rubbing sheet metal as they pull it off the floor, door to door, off the floor. Looks like 
make identical bumpers at the line, a photo finish if it was here. Now Earnhardt, just a whisker in front, just a tickle, about two to three inches, going to turn number one, however. Allison rubs sheet metal with him, gets up alongside that fender, trying to hang on downstairs. Earnhardt has got the rough lane as he goes to the outside, and down that back straightaway, Allison continues to try to get the lead back. And it looks like he's going to do it as he has a lot of acceleration going into turn three, but handling extremely well is Dale Earnhardt as he has the Thunderbird sinking high, and he's able to stay right there beside Bobby Allison Stewart. 31-year-old Dale Earnhardt, 1980 national champion, Bobby Allison still... Allison goes back in front of the start-finish line as they complete lap 43, still side-by-side -side at the first turn. They just shuffle and dice back and forth. It's a dead heat in turn one. Turn two, you could not give anybody the victory. It'd have to go to Allison and Earnhardt because there's no separation. They're doing it down the back shoot. Two strong-willed individuals here. They're going to battle here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, and they remain door-to-door, but they have some slower traffic up front, and someone's going to have to get drowned as they neck down to this one-groove turn four exit, but they're still door-to-door. -door. Coming by to complete. 66 miles, 44 laps. Earnhardt goes out in front as they wheel around a lap automobile. Got caught on a lap car. You seldom see Bobby Allison caught there. Bobby Hillen Jr. moved out of spec. And that's all it took for Earnhardt to go out in front. He leads by four car lengths out of turn two. And a 40 lap rundown has the speed at 133.251 miles per hour. The old record, David Pearson, back in 1978 in the Woods Brothers Purulator Mercury at the time at 154, 154.750. Let's get a quick large report from Pat Patterson. I'm standing by with Rayfield Farms, Bob Graham Pilot, Ron Bouchard, and what happened to the car, Ron? Well, it looks like it cracked the old pan, and uh, there's just no way we can fix it. Uh, we changed the valve cover, thinking it was a gasket, and it looks like the oil pan is broken, so there's nothing we can do to fix it. How about the track, Ron? Is the track in good shape today? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, with the cold temperatures and, and how much sun, the track is real tight. And, uh, you know, we just wish we could be out there. Okay, back upstairs, kids. circle and wanting to do it here in Charlotte leads the event. Bobby Allison has fallen eight car lengths back in second. Bill Elliott is trying to overwhelm him now as he runs in third with Darrell Waltrip in fourth and right behind Waltrip is the Skull Bandit. Harry Gant is beginning to make his moves. In the sixth spot, it remains Kaylee Arborell. Seventh would be Neil Bonnet. Riding in the eighth position is Joe Rutman. Ninth, Terry Labonte. Tenth is Richard Petty. Eleventh, Jeff Bodine. Twelfth, Kyle Petty. Thirteenth would go to Ricky Rudd. As the field moves in the back straightaway, they come out of that third and fourth turn, all beginning to use the track a little higher. And that seems awfully early to start going that high on the racetrack. Banjo Matthews, your opinion on that? Well, you know, uh, I think Bobby Allison didn't stop uh, in that 20 lap thing, and uh, he might uh, have his strategy a little messed up. There goes tail up high. Uh, the tires are starting to get hot, and you'll be seeing pit stops here shortly. 48 laps when they come by this time. 48 complete. And the tough customer, Dale Earnhardt, stays in front in the World 600. Piedmont Country. It's... 48 laps complete in Dale Earnhardt. And, uh, of course, Bobby Allison out right behind him. Both of them battling for that lap leader money as we approach in about, well, less than 20 laps. That 67th lap, the 100-mile mark for that first $5,000 to be paid to who's leading at that lap. And, of course, $5,000 to be paid for the one who's led the most laps during that 100 miles. This is this year's 7-Eleven Super Lapper Awards, of course. A record $50,000 in 7-Eleven Super Lapper Awards money to be paid today during the World 600 of the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The fine people at 7-Eleven who have really gotten themselves in gear this year with the Charlotte Motor Speedway and with NASCAR racing. That $50,000 eclipses the previous stock car lap. Leader record of $40,000 paid to the 1977 World 600. 1977 World 600, we bargain. Allison, Earnhardt, side by side in the back stretch. Allison with a strength on the back stretch to pull into that turn three. Dale Earnhardt, back in second. We go back to Performance Racing Network. Allison has gone back into first place. For the last two laps, they have been side by side. Now it is Allison with the advantage another time. Allison on the point. Earnhardt in the second position, going third, Elliott, and up to fourth moves Harry Gant, and Gant, at the present time, the skull bandit of Travis Carter, that machine is the fastest car on the track, he is running down Bill Elliott for third position. Let's pause for the 60-second announcement, this is the Performance Racing Network.
It is Bobby Allison back taking that lead from Dale Earnhardt once again. Bill Elliott, who started on the outside pole, back to the third slot, followed by Harry Gant and Darrell Waltrip in the number 11 machine. Bobby Allison maintaining that lead going into the fourth turn. Coming out of that fourth turn in the back straightaway, still followed by Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt's car handling so well this afternoon in that Wrangler Tough Jeans machine. Back in that third slot still, Bill Elliott. Fourth with Harry Gatt in this gold banded racing car. And, the, of course, the Pepsi Challenger in the number 11 slot here. The Charlotte Motor Speedway's 24th annual running of the World 600. Congratulations, too, to the Ingersoll Rand Pit Crew Awards. Went to the Terry Labonte Racing Team for the Budweiser car that Terry Labonte is driving. The number 44 car from Corpus Christi, Texas. T uh, Terry Labonte making quite a name with that new team this year. Here at Charlotte, Bobby Allison waging war around this mile and a half track with Dale Earnhardt, the two-time champion, looking very stout at the present time. Allison maintaining a two-car length advantage as he completes his 51st lap. Allison first, Earnhardt second. Harry Gant is closed up and is right behind Bill Elliott and is trying to overtake him at turn one. Elliott comes to the outside, Gant goes downstairs, gets him, shuffles right back into the inside and rides the high groove out of turn number two. Looks like Earnhardt may be ready to move on Allison for the lead down the back stretch. We'll watch him, but he's about a half a car length back. He accelerates, but meanwhile, Harry Gant trying to take up where he left over here in the National 500 last year is gaining ground in third spot with Elliott in fourth and Walter riding fifth. Helix is running in first, Ford Fairlane, or Ford Thunderbird riding in second, and maintaining the third spot is the car number 33, which is the Buick of Harry Gant, and then comes the Ford Thunderbird of Bill Elliott. Then Waltrip is in fifth, sixth is Yarborough, seventh is Bonnet, eighth is Rutman, ninth is Petty, tenth is Labonte, eleventh is Kyle Petty, twelfth moving up is Ricky Rudd, Bodine goes back to thirteenth as they go to one. Dick Brooks, which should be shown in the 14th position in the Judy Donlevy car. They're battling out of turn number two between Kyle Petty and Ricky Rudd. Meanwhile, Darling Dixon standing by with a gentleman who really feels something very special for this race, the mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Charlotte is having its greatest weekend, I believe, in history. Darlene, what's the story? I have with me Mayor Eddie Knox today, and I just want to thank him for coming by and welcoming all these fans out here. This is a great crowd, Eddie. Darlene, it gets bigger every year, and it's a great, excitement time for the people of Charlotte and Cabarrus County, and we had a marvelous weekend with the World 600 Festival. We have a 600 Festival, a gala happening here, and we want to invite everybody to come to Charlotte Motor Speedway in the greatest city in the world. Well, you're very nice. We, we think it's a great city. It is because the people who come here and support the Charlotte Motor Speedway make it that way. Well, thank you for stopping by the press box. Now back to you, Ken. Bobby Allison weaving through traffic going into turn number one, and Bill Kennelly almost had a basket full of race cars right on the front bumper. Harry Gant was almost taking a basket with him. He was so loose coming into turn number one. Looks like the traffic behind Harry, it could have played havoc out of that number one corner, out of the trioval. They're down the back stretch in that real group of cars. And Harry Gant is really on the move now. He's closed right up within a car length of the second place runner, Dale Earnhardt, but right on his back bumper is trouble in the part of Bill Elliott, who pulled off a fourth. Then three seconds back is the Waltrip car, and Waltrip seems to be waiting this one out, letting some of these guys go out and play rabbit here for a while. And as he watches that, he seems to be sitting. That must be Junior Johnson tactic at its best, although usually Junior's command is to go to the front, Banjo. Yeah, it appears that way. You know, Earnhardt kind of used his tires up. Here comes Harry Gant up, and uh, he waited a little while for his charge. Bobby's tires got hot. He you might say slowed down a while, and now he's back leading. Uh, the tires really play a factor on this race track. Ten laps away is a $5,000 lap from 7-Eleven, one of those super laps in this race, a $5,000 bonus for the car leading. Now that's uh, just nine laps away as the leaders bustle by, go down into turn number one, and the struggle is on. Out of turn number two, it's Harry Gant down on the inside to try to put the move on Dale Earnhardt for second as Bobby Allison tries to get some lead margin into turn three. Gant stops it and he slingshot down inside of Dale Earnhardt's car. Has the bottom groove, but Earnhardt's still sticking well high. Oh, they almost touched sheet metal off before, and it's Gant by three feet. Coming down to complete 
Lap 59 is Gant on the inside, Earnhardt on the outside. Allison has picked up $5,000 in bonus for leading the most laps in the first 100 miles. We're now up to lap 60, and nobody seemingly can take it away from him. Out of turn number two, Gant just gives that second position over back to Dale Earnhardt. He had it momentarily. Harry Gant's back in third. Elliott is fourth. Riding fifth would be Waltrip in the sixth spot. And then Terry Labonte. Buddy Baker is off the pace. Baker's car has fallen back in the standings. As we look back through, we find Baker well back in 18th position now. 18th spot for Buddy Baker. Gant and the Skull Bandit making a shot at Earnhardt, and Earnhardt that time was able to fend him off. Leader continues to be Allison with now 60 laps complete, 90 miles, some 340 laps remaining. With the skies the way they are, here comes Ricky Rudd on pit road in car number three. That halfway mark of 200 laps will be all important today. If they can get in half the race, that would make it official. The 12th place car, Ricky Rudd is in for right side tires. Here's the story from Chuck Young. As you said, Ken Squire, they are taking on right side rubber and fuel in the Piedmont car now. With the caution that came out earlier, uh, I thought that uh, Ricky Wood could go a lot farther than the gas, but I don't know if he pitted earlier or not or if he stayed out. Right side rubber and fuel on the car as the Piedmont team is down and away. Now, we have made our way also into the Valvoline pits of Buddy Baker. I'm going to check in with Leonard Wood, and we'll see if we've got a story brewing here. Well, it would seem so. The man who's won it three times and set on the pole with the Wood Brothers car has been falling back with car number three just pitting. That would leave the number 21 machine of Buddy Baker in 17th position. Here's Darrell Waltrip lapping Tommy Gale as he goes into the first turn in the Pepsi-Cola car. Waltrip attacking, still trying to move through as he goes up in the first turn banking. And Harry Gant sits in the middle of a rocking chair on the front is Earnhardt. In the back is Bill Elliott. Gant just resting there in the middle of that three-car draft at turn three. Right now, though, it looks like that the car driven by Bobby Allison, the Miller High Life Buick, has things going pretty much its own way for that 67 lap award that's being paid by 7-Eleven here today. That's five laps away. Here comes Gant going to the outside on Earnhardt. Buddy Baker is a, about ten laps away from going a lap down to the leader, Bobby Allison. Baker falling off the pace after sitting on the pole at 162 miles an hour. Gant takes a shot at the inside, going down the back straightaway to Bill Cannell. Harry Gant trying to move on Dale Earnhardt. Right behind them is Bill Elliott. He can put the move on, too. Gant will take over the number two spot. Earnhardt goes to third. Elliott is fourth. And right now, that's the way they pull it off of the deep part of turn number four down toward the double dog leg front straightaway. Ricky Rudd is pitting another Gant. A four-tire change, they say. We'll get a story from Chuck Young as to exactly what's going on. A four-tire change was made earlier on Buddy Baker's car, and it may not be working properly. We'll check in on that in a moment. Meanwhile, we're watching as Harry Gant, now at turn two, Bill Elliott's on the move by Earnhardt. Side by side go the two Fords. Gant was sandwiched between those two cars moments ago. It looks like Earnhardt's going to come out on top. Flying Thunderbirds enter turn number three with Earnhardt riding just ahead of Bill Elliott. Let's see if Elliott can pull it back off as he'll try to battle him off a four. Here he comes, but he still knows the tail. One of the 7-Eleven $5,000 bonus laps upcoming. And here is Harry Gant finally getting around the number 15, the blue and yellow car, the Wrangler car of Dale Earnhardt. And he really wanted to take a crack at Allison to see if he could collect an extra five grand. But that's not the case at the present time. Looks like the, uh, looks like the scoreboard here showing some smoke for a moment. That may be a symbol that they're up to the lap that pays the money. Or it could be that we're in dire straits with the scoreboard today. <laughs> Here they are, back to the line. And as they race down, it is a lap down for Buddy Baker as Bobby Allison puts a lap on him, going into turn number one. And there's the story. They're into the 66. A $5,000 bonus coming up for Bobby Allison. But Harry Gant just won't turn loose. Gant almost got the wall. It could be tires wearing on him down here in turn number one, but he just about took a little sheet metal damage up against the guardrail. He's midway down the back straightaway, and Buddy Baker is way off the pace. But Gant is not going to be able to make it because here's Allison riding high right and handsome right in the middle groove, and Bobby Allison is headed down pit road in the Miller car. Bobby Allison coming in. He picked up the bonus money, took $5,000, and said, Harry, you can have it for a while. On pit road, Chuck Young, what's the story on Buddy Baker's car? Well, I'm with Richard Childers right now. Richard, what's Ricky's problem? We broke the right front caliper on the brake. Are you going to the garage area? Yeah. Okay, we'll go down and get the report uh, from Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker. Can, can you 
with lightness at all on Baker. We understand the car might have been working loose in Gucciano. Yes, that's the problem. Excuse me. Whoa, Let's trouble out of turn number two. It's Joe Rubin. He's lost the car going into the outside wall. There's two more. It's Jeff Bodine. Involved is David Pearson. About five, six, seven automobiles crashing out of turn number two. 68th lap. Big crash in the second turn. Major altercation in turn number two will bring out the second caution of the day. We'll be going back to Bill Connell in just a moment. Coming out of turn two, Rutman took the outside wall. He limped to the inside. Cars darting left and right, trying to avert him. And we have several more in the accident. We'll check on them. Make sure we have the correct and pass it along to you. Here is Rutman coming in. The right front tire is down on the ground. But the car looks intact. It isn't showing too much damage. Bill Cannell, what more can you tell us right now? Undoubtedly, that tire exploded. It sounded like a bomb going off. Rutman got into the high wall out of turn number two, started looping the car, hit the inside wall. Involved is Jeff Bodine, David Pearson. Jimmy Means is up against the outside wall near the fans here on the back straightaway. Dick Brooks is also involved. Pearson's car has come around and is going back to the garage area. The whole front end sandwiched back about six, seven inches on David Pearson's machine, and it is trailing leaking fluid as it goes back to the garage area near Pat Patterson. An incident as we get close to the 70 lap mark brings out the second caution of the day and the three-time champion David Pearson. David Pearson will not get a chance to go for a fourth. So now the question is, will Buddy Baker become the fourth? Allison repitting. Here's a late report from Bill Connell. Well, Jimmy Means' car remains stuck to the outside wall down the back straightaway. They're also uh, administering to the Jeff Bodine car, which has got some damage setting on the inside wall near the infield of the back straightaway. The altercation developed out of turn number two. A wild spin as a tire erupted or exploded on the Joe Rutman automobile. Went into Jimmy, but somebody did, and they put him sideways, and uh, that went in, he went into me, and then after that, I mean, you know, everyone just started running into everyone and uh, I don't know why the guys behind didn't see what was happening it seemed like there was a long wait there before we got up to Joe but uh, we'd all slowed down just an uh, unfortunate thing it seemed like this has been following us here for last month okay Jeff Bodine that's the story from down here let's go back to Ken Squire indeed field is ready for green once again and on the break they're trying to run down Buddy Baker inside goes Morgan Shepard and outside goes Dale Earnhardt as they swap him in turn number one. Three wide as they came into this wall, but Earnhardt comes out on the point. Waltrip is on the charge, but what a run for Morgan Shepard. Buddy Baker is just dropping back in the pack. Here's Gant, then Neil Bonnet. Thunderbird, Chevrolet, Buick, top three automobiles driven by the Wrangler driver, Dale Earnhardt. In second spot, it's Darrell Walter riding third, Harry Gant. Looking low now, here's Neil Bonnet coming off the floor shuffling positions as they go back to green with Earnhardt in first. There goes the number 11 car down the outside into the turn number one area. Darrell Waltrip in that second spot as Morgan Shepard's effort to get a lap back is falling far short. And here comes Harry Gant on the attack for second place. Walter to the outside. Gant down on the inside. Bonnet's right behind there. So is Baker and Terry Labonte. Here comes Bill Elliott back up through the pack. He's right alongside Joe Rutman's automobile. But it's Gant and Bonnet as they use the draft to get down inside of Darrell Walter, who was riding second. Back behind the Thunderbird of, of Earnhardt, who leads the race. Neil Bonnet going to third. Walter falls to fourth. In fifth position, it is Bonnet. And in sixth position is Bill Elliott. Riding at seventh, Joe Rutman, who is, should be off the pace a bit after that altercation. That'll be Yarborough seventh. Riding eighth would be Bobby Allison. Ninth, Kyle Petty, as they move down the back chute. Allison trying to make up ground. You know, he led that big $100, uh, $5,000 lap a little bit earlier, but right now, still your leader coming off a of turn number four right at the bottom of the speedway. The car driven by Dale Earnhardt. Back they come. This is the 84th lap complete, and it's Earnhardt. That second spot is Dan, and he is rapidly closing ground. Harry Gant moving up in the Skull Bandit on the Wrangler Blue and Yellow, number 15. Neil Bonnet ready to make a move also and reeling them in. Here comes Waltrip, Baker, Labonte, and Elliott. We could have a nine-car train down this back stretch shortly. Big choo-choo train at that area, looking low down on the inside, and his Thunderbird is Bill Elliott, but he has to drop back in line in seventh position. Three-car length advantage enjoyed by Earnhardt over Gant, who's second, and Bonnet rides third. The first-place skirmish has car number 15, Dale Earnhardt, right there. Second place, Harry Gant. Third, Neil Bonnet. Fourth is Waltrip, and here comes Terry Labonte moving under Buddy Baker, putting them a lap down as he goes to fifth place at turn number one. Bill 
Bill Elliott is right behind Terry Labonte. He's picking off Buddy Baker on the inside. Baker is high. Yarborough is on the move. Elliott up to six places. as the field moves to turn number three. Still showing a big lead there. Dale Earnhardt looking just like he did yesterday. He's able to handle low on the racetrack, but so can Bonnet, who's third, and he moves up on Harry Gander, still right second. Coming by, 84 complete. Behind Elliott in the sixth position, Yarborough in seventh, Bobby Allison in eighth. Going ninth is Kyle Petty. Mark Martin continues to stay right up here with him, and I don't believe Mark Martin has gone a lap down in that Zervakis car, number 01, a white and silver numeral car which, uh, as you know from Sonny Hutchins' days with Emmanuel Javakis, ran very well. And here they are back in Grand National Racing. Petty is right behind Mark Martin, Richard Petty, trying for this third win in the World 600. 85 complete with Dale Earnhardt now drawing to a 20-car length advantage over Harry Gant and Neil Bonnet up on the rear buffer of Gant's green and white car. Bonnet ready to put a move on Earnhardt. He may go downstairs. He looks, decides, different. Single file out of turn number two. So it'll be Bonnet third, Walter fourth, Labonte fifth. It's a battle for fifth down the back stretch. Bill Elliott goes to the inside. He may get him. Thunderbird of Elliott door to door down on the inside of that automobile and they're still nose to nose, but he gets Labonte going into three as Labonte has to get out of the accelerator a little bit. Off of turn four, the deep part of that turn is still Dale Earnhardt, your leader. Behind Earnhardt, it is Gant second, Bonnet third, Wall trip fourth. The persistent Bill Elliott is now to fifth as he's moved around Terry Labonte. And the dark horse here, Elliott, continues to run down cars. Battle for second place at turn two. Bonnet on the inside, Gant on the outside. They're going to try to, this could hurt him really get Dale Earnhardt, but it's helping. Bonnet, dead heat, down that back straightaway with Gant. Bonnet with more acceleration going into turn three, takes over second spot. Gant, one car link, follow back, four cars back to Dale, uh, to Darrell Walton, who rides fourth, and fifth belongs to Bill Elliott. 87 complete. Earnhardt in front. Bonnet drawing away a bit in second, pulling up about three car lengths as he goes into turn number one. And here is Mark Martin closing on Kyle Petty as they go to the first turn. Mark Martin right down to the inside of Kyle Petty. He'll shove it by the almost touch. Up high is Kyle. Mark Martin will pick him off. Kyle will be drop kicked back to position. They move down that back stretch. Two young drivers doing battle down the 2,000 foot long back chute here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And down into turn number three they go as they really fly high wide and have some around this beautiful speedway. Fourth spot, Waltrip, fifth spot, Elliott, sixth, Lavati, seventh, Yarborough, then eighth, Bobby Allison, and the ninth position unofficially, Mark Martin with tenth, Kyle Petty, and eleventh, Richard Petty. Twelfth, Benny Parsons. Parsons is battling right now and got his hands full with Morgan Shepard and the Stacy car number two. Shepard way up high. Parsons down inside him. What a run for Lake Speed this afternoon. Lake moves off down the back chute. It looks like though the battle is going to be for that lead again as Bonnet has crept right back up on the back door as he's looking at Earnhardt down the double old leg front straight away. So far, the weatherman, knock on wood, has blessed this event. We've had just a couple of skirmishes with showers, but they have abated without even the caution flag being thrown. There was a little moisture in the air. At one time, it was enough to concern the drivers, and they were pointing toward their windshields, but they kept the race going, and they, were, and, and, and they lucked in on that one. The race has stayed green. It kept the track dry, and here we are now coming to 90 laps when they come by this time with Dale Earnhardt's blue and yellow Wrangler car prepared by Bud Moore leading by two car lengths over the Warner Hodgson car, number 75 from the Raymark Racing Team. The Hodgson car is there, that maroon white gold car challenging for the lead in the first turn. He's chewing away on his rear bumper. Earnhardt knows he's there and coming in right behind Bonnet's automobile is Harry Gant on the move. Found that back straightaway is still Earnhardt, Bonnet, Gant, Waltrip, Elliott, Midway. Labonte rides in the sixth spot. Seventh is Cale Yarbrough taking it into three. Eighth belongs to Bobby Allison, the number 22 Miller Highlight Buick. As they come back to the line, here is Bonnet, winner, defending champion of the World 600, going to the inside. He's making his move at the first turn. Traffic could play a factor because dead ahead is some of the slower lap cars. Tommy Gale is there, Jim Vandiver's there, Earnhardt, and Bonnet squeezed right to the outside where that altercation developed a moment ago. Heavy congestion in the back straightaway, but averting it, clearing it, getting through, down the back straightaway, Earnhardt stays in front. Beautiful driving by Earnhardt, Bonnet, and Harry Gant as that trio moves through four, five slower automobiles. And now it is Bill Elliott's opportunity on the main straightaway, the passing flag out and the slower cars drop down. 
the 64 of Tommy Gale, the 18 car was there. They're fighting for position further back, Slick Johnson, and they don't want to give up any more ground than they have to because toward the end they could be well up in this standing in a 600-mile jaunt like this. There's a hot battle for fifth place off turn two down the back stretch between Waltrip, Labonte, and Cale Yarbrough. Keep an eye on Lake Speed and Richard Petty. And a hot battle in turn three for the lead. And it certainly is, but right now it looks like it's going to be fun and having to fall back behind a slower car, but he may challenge down the double dog leg front straightaway right now. On to the inside, Neil Bonnet pressing, he's there, he's going for first place as they enter the first turn. Earnhardt shoves to the outside, goes upstairs, Bonnet is downstairs, still door to door, out of turn number two, maybe a point, just a distance, Earnhardt, no, down the back stretch, Bonnet gives him no room. Dynamic duo down the mid part of the back straightaway, sheet metal in danger of rubbing here as they both go into turn three side by side, Earnhardt able to hang on on the high groove, but now Bonnet with about a car length advantage pulls it off the deep part of turn number four. The Neil Bonnet Chevrolet back in first, the Ford Thunderbird in second, the Buick maintaining third, and Ford in fourth. The drivers, it's Neil Bonnet first, Earnhardt in second, Gant in third, and a second and a half back in the fourth position, Bill Elliott. And in fifth is Darrell Correction. Darrell Waltrip has just been passed. It is Cale Yarbrough. The Hardy's restaurant car is on the move. He's up to fifth. And the Pepsi Cola automobile, driven by Darrell Waltrip, falls into sixth position. Terry Labonte has just shuffled by Yarbrough. Labonte has got the uh, fifth position nailed down. And back in sixth now will be Yarbrough. Seventh is Waltrip. Eighth is Allison. Indeed, that is correct. Labonte has picked up the fifth position. Labonte has gone to fifth. Going into six is Cale Yarborough, and dropping back a little is Darrell Waltrip. Chuck Young, you might want to get a report from the Junior Johnson crew. Seems like Darrell is dropping back a bit more than he might wish at this time, which is 95 laps into the race. We're 142 and a half miles down with some 305 laps remaining in the 24th running of the World 600. We'll pause for this... Three, one. Your leaders are in the back stretch. It's Neil Bonner with about an eight car advantage over Harry Gant, who's moved up to second. Dale Earnhardt runs third. Bill Elliott, Thunderbird, is fourth. Fifth place right now goes to Terry Labonte in the Budweiser ride. Sixth will be Cale Yarborough. Back to seventh, Darrell Waltrip. Bobby Allison in eighth. Way, way back there to Joe Rutman. And it's going to be, it looks like, Kyle Petty followed by Benny Parsons, Richard, and Lake Speed. And that's the way the top. 12 cars are running at this moment. Now back down into turn number one. It's still Neil Bonnet in that Warner Hodgson powered machine number 75 on the point with Harry Gant moving up to challenge for second place and Dale Earnhardt losing just a little bit of ground back into third with Bill Elliott running a strong fourth place right now. Terry Labonte still maintains fifth here in the World 600 as Neil Bonnet who ran strong all day yesterday in the Mellow Yellow 300 back out here today. The defending World 600 champion looking awfully strong as he crosses the stripe. But here comes Harry Gant, the Skull Bandit, up to about a car length within Neil Bonnet as they go into turn one. Gant down low, Bonnet up high. Let's see if Gant takes his shot down the backstretch. As they power down the backstretch, it's still going to be Bonnet on the point with Harry Gant, riding a close second, and Dale Earnhardt in third as they swing into turn three. Bill Bonnet continues to be your leader. Checking back through the pack, Cale Yarborough running in sixth place. Seventh place right now we will be awarded to Bobby Allison with Darrell Waltrip. Luke Puckey's losing just a little bit of ground. He's falling back to eighth place as they come out of turn number four. Waltrip back into eighth place. Once again, your leader's back down into turn one. It's still going to be Neil Bonnet with Harry Gant putting on a good show for the second place run today here in the World 600 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Glad to have you 100,000 plus fans on hand today. Caution on the speedway. We got problems up in turns three and four. It looks like Lake Speed and possibly the car of Benny Parsons. We'll get a positive ID on that in a second as we got caution on the speedway. Three, it has just happened moments moments ago. Hal Hill Overton, let's go to you. Tommy Gale in car number 64, the Sunny King Ford Thunderbird, spun it around. He got up in the wall all alone at the first point of impact in turn number three. Spun down into the infield, but in his efforts to try to avoid that automobile, Ken Reagan. Reagan is driving the Feinemann Buick. Ken from Unadella, Georgia.
Georgia was not able to avoid it. He got down and received a lick on the inside guardrail. Now he's come on around, but both of these cars appear to be in big trouble, and looks like Tommy Gale will be coming out of that car, which is parked down on the grassy area at the base midway between turns three and four. It, it, it appeared as though Tommy Gale may have cut a tire down or had a steering problem because we were just having to watch when Tommy went in, and all of a sudden, he just flat went into the wall banjo. And we also noted that some of the leaders uh, are beginning to shuffle some positions. For instance, Earnhardt is back to third. Maybe the, uh, it may be time for some tire change. Well, you know, it's getting up time close to the uh, pit stop time, and when the tires start giving up, things like this happen, and uh, it gives everybody a free uh, pit stop, you might say. Well, they're still down there with Tommy Gale's car. It has crashed just in the middle of the third and fourth turn on the 17-degree banking of the mile-and-a-half Charlotte Motor Speedway. All the leaders are now on pit road. Here's Allison coming in. Banjo, incredible luck. And that's what it has to be. Some great racing strategy, no question, for Allison. He picked up the $10,000 bonus, the best he could do in the first 100 miles. And then the moment he had collected it, the caution came out. Right, he came down the pit road to lead that lap. Uh, he went in the pits. He changed right side tires. The, the, the caution happened. He didn't lose a lap. Uh, you know, I don't know whether you call it strategy or dumb luck. Now, whatever it is, it's certainly working well for Allison. He's had his share of misfortune. Uh, another report from Hill Overton. What's the story on Tommy Gale's car? Well, he's out of the automobile now and walking around taking a look at the damage, which seems to be rather severe down the left-hand side as he actually backed it into the wall. Left front corner, left side, left rear corner of that car all used up. They have a flatbed truck over there now. The trailer is pointed down, so they're going to try to shove the car up onto that flatbed truck with the uh, body tilted. Yes, there was about a 24-second pit stop, which uh, the crew really did a real good job. We come in about uh, seventh or eighth, and uh, we almost got out second. If we were just a little bit quicker, we'd have been here. Oh, that's Jeff Hammond, the Jack Man, Virginia Johnson's Pepsi Challenger team. After this shuffle on pit road with all the leaders coming in, it'll be Dale Earnhardt in the lead. There are now 102 laps of the 400 completed. Dale Earnhardt, how do you feel about this race? So I'm, I'm really optimistic about this thing. I, I really feel good about it. I got a good feeling about this race. Uh, the cars work good all week, so, you know, everything's looking real good for us. We'll see. Earnhardt is in the lead, and he feels good about this race. Bobby Allison, who do you watch for out here? When you get here to Charlotte, uh, you know, I ran off a good here with Bud Morris Ford. Uh, the Thunderbirds are all strong here, so I have to think that that particular... Uh, situation right now represents a a car advantage. Uh, they've worked hard for it, and uh, Ford finally got a lot of those parts out that they've been promising everybody for a long time. And uh, it looks like well, we're going to have to uh, uh, tighten our belts a little bit and catch back up with the Fords uh, if they do indeed continue to to give their uh, competitive teams the the good stuff. So uh, uh, I'd say that, uh, true, this probably is a Ford track, especially in terms of qualifying, but even in the race. You know, Bonnet uh, and Elliott were strong in the 600 last year, and Elliott was right there in the 500 all day. So uh, the, the Fords do perform very well here. And, of course, I had some, some good days here in Bud Morse Thunderbird when I drove it. 13 cars in the lead lap being led at the present time by Bud Moore's Ford Thunderbird, as you just heard Bobby Allison talking about. The Skull Bandit car of Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham is maintaining a battle right up in front. Hal Needham, uh, what about it? Is this going to be your day? You won the National 500 here with this car a year ago? I think we should repeat the performance and do it again, don't you? <laughs> I had a great performance last night, a world premiere of your new motion picture in town. You must have been delighted by the tremendous congregation that gathered for charity here in Charlotte, North Carolina last night to see Old Stroker race. Yeah, I tell you, Ken, it was, it was really nice. And I, I tell everybody, I think we had a stacked deck with the people that were there because they were all NASCAR people or uh, sponsors or whatever. But the uh, reaction to the film was just tremendous. We, we really um, think it's going to be a hot film. Jim Neighbors was a real sleeper in that film, one of his first performances outside of television, and he certainly fit in well with Lonnie Anderson and Burt Reynolds. I tell you, uh, people, when you say sleeper, that's exactly right. Uh, Jim Neighbors is such a talented guy. I mean, 
Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen his Vegas act, but he, he could do a little bit of everything, and I thought he was just tremendous in there. As a matter of fact, we started calling uh, Travis Carter Lug Carter this morning. <laughs> Good luck to you. When is, when is the film going to get national distribution? Uh, we come out in about 11, 1,200 theaters uh, July the 1st. Have fun. I'm sure you look as nervous as ever. How can a guy who is such a director who gets all that stuff organized look like such a basket case when the race starts? I don't know. It just happens again. <laughs> I mean, when I see uh, Harry down there battling, trying to get around somebody up to the lead or something, my heart pounds. And I tell everybody in the suite, don't talk to me. I don't want to hear you. All right. We're ready for a heart pounder as they come around a complete lap number 105. I'll need them by for just a moment. Who stroke a race? World premiered crowd coming to their feet here at Charlotte, North Carolina as part of this great festival, this great occasion. We're watching Dale Earnhardt come to the line as they get the green flag. It'll be Earnhardt first, Harry Gant, the Skull Bandit second, that Needham car. Then in the third position, it is the number 11 of Darrell Waltrip hanging right there, Bill Connell. Well, maybe that tire change helped. Waltrip is running right on the rear bumper, but Gant is flying. He's going to reel in Earnhardt, try to get in that lead. He collects some of that lap money down the back stretch. Waltrip is third, Labonte is fourth, fifth is Allison. Riding in sixth spot is Cale Yarbrough, seventh is Bill Elliott, eighth looks like Benny Parsons, and ninth Richard Petty. Your leader enjoying a three-car length advantage over the Skull Bandit as they pull off the deep part of turn four. Tenth is the Mark Martin car, then in eleventh is Lake Speed and running twelfth. This is uh, checking here on Kyle Petty. He's making some moves out there. Petty trying to... Kyle Petty really beginning to show some authority. He had been in uh, 12th, 13th. He, he's trying to come right back up through again. He's staying in the lead lap, and Lake Speed is doing a good job. Again, 13 cars in that lead lap with 106 laps complete. Earnhardt in front, Gant in second, and Waltrip gets real serious about things in third place. Out of turn number four, behind Waltrip comes Allison, then Labonte, K.O. Yarbrough, followed by Bill Elliott, Benny Parsons, Richard Petty, Buddy Baker, and Neil Bonnet. Eight lead changes among five drivers thus far in the 24th running of the World 600. After all the noise and the thunder of a race, I look forward to some peace and quiet, and that means it's time for Copenhagen. Clark Moore, extension 275, please. With Clark Moore, please call extension 275. Here's a list of some of the cars out of the action today. Car number 27 of Tim Richmond, 47 of Ron Bouchard, 16 of David Pearson, 90 of Dick Brooks, 52 of Jimmy Means, 88 of Jeff Bodine has retired. Rick Newsom's 02 car is out. And, of course, car number 97 is also out of the race today. So that's a partial list of some of the machines that are no longer running in today's World 600. As they go down to the back stretch, they're going to be three wide with Earnhardt. Walter Allison comes up on the inside. Allison and Earnhardt split Walter if they make the sandwich. It's Earnhardt and Allison side by side out of turn number four. Allison to the inside. Earnhardt to the outside as they come back down through the double dog leg. Who's it going to be at the stripe? It's going to be Allison three wide with Walter and Earnhardt and Yarborough in a close fourth as they storm off into turn two and one. And it's going to be Allison to the inside with his nose right out in front of Dale Earnhardt's Thunderbird as they head into the back stretch. We join with the Miller High Life car. Way. And now in lap 110, they are working the 110th lap. It is Bobby Allison in command with the Earnhardt car in second. Right on his rear bumper is Darrell Waltrip third. Cale Yarborough is fourth. Falling back to fifth is Harry Gant. And he's about to go back another position as Bill Elliott pulls to fifth. Gant falls to sixth. Seventh, Labonte. Going eighth is Neil Bonnet. Benny Parsons is ninth. Richard Petty, tenth. Buddy Baker would be shown in the 11th spot, followed by Kyle Petty running 12th. Lake Speed is 13th. Down the back stretch, three cars battling Earnhardt, Waltrip, and Yarborough. Big battle is for second spot right now. It belongs to the car driven by Waltrip. Correction, uh, Earnhardt is second. Waltrip dropped all the way back to fourth because muscling his way in the third spot is Cale Yarborough. 112 complete. And the leader of the World 600, Dale Earnhardt. Cale Yarborough showing some authority in the Hardy's car into second place and ready to challenge for first. More of the World 600 after this 70-second break for these messages and station identification on the Performance Racing Network. Down the back stretch they go. Bobby Allison of the Miller High Life car has mounted a pretty good lead as they head into turns three and four. He's got about a 20-car length advantage over your second-place runner of Kale Yarborough in the Hardy Chevrolet. Then it's going to be Dale Earnhardt pounding down the front stretch with Darrell Walter coming to the inside and Bill Elliott running a close fifth. Bonnet and Labonte run 
door to door for sixth place with Harrigan and seventh Richard Petty up to eight. Bobby Allison continues to lead the pack as they head into turns one and two and down the back stretch. It's car 22 of Bobby Allison. Yarborough extending his advantage for second place with Waltrip and Earnhardt pounding on each other as they head down to the back stretch. And look at number nine, Bill Elliott. He's been right in the front five all day long. Neil Bonnet up to sixth place right now as Bonnet continues to run strong here at Charlotte today. Harry Gant rest is back there in eighth place and then it's Richard Petty running ninth as they come back down the front stretch and across the start finish line for one more lap. The next big money lap on your 7-Eleven Super Lap Leader Award will be lap number 134. So whatever car happens to be leading lap number 134 wins an additional $5,000 in prize money. So you can bet that that's on the mind right now of Bobby Allison and Cale Yarborough. Complete as the battle seesaws in the 24th World 600. Bobby Allison scoots out in front and begins to unlimber a pretty good sized lead over second place Cale Yarborough. Almost a half second for Allison in first, Yarborough in second. Then it's a snarl for third position. Waltrip is there and also contending for that third spot, Neil Bonnet and Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt's on the outside. Bonnet is on the inside. Back there in the battle behind them is Bill Elliott and Terry Labonte, Harry Gant, Richard Petty, along with Benny Parsons and Buddy Baker. They're on the back shoot. Little swirl down that back straight away for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth position. They're in turn three. Waldrop third, right on his back bumper. Bonnet in fourth, fifth belongs to Earnhardt. Sixth, Elliott, seventh, Labonte. 114 laps are complete. Here's Neil Bonnet up on Waldrop. And he's beginning to exert some strength again. Bonnet holding back a bit. And that's part of this game, Banjo Matthews, is to be able to bridle yourself a little for the end of this race. Here is Bonnet getting underneath Waltrip, taking the spot. You sure don't want to overrun a race car on a 600-miler. No, but you know what happens when they, all this thing that people talk about tires is uh, you get a minor differential in tire, and, and uh, one, car, one set feels just a little bit better than the other one. The other person's tires just don't feel quite as good, and they jock the position back and forth. And uh, uh, you can see it now. Kelly Arbor is uh, running Bobby Allison down before he was back in the middle of the pack. Now Daryl's starting to run a little high in the corner, so he still hasn't got his chassis dialed in yet. Last lap at 33.77 seconds, a little over 160 mile per hour average on this mile and a half track, where Allison is in front, but his lead is diminishing as car number 28, Cale Yarborough's pulling up, folks. Old Cale has really got the Hardy's car, the Harry Rainier machine, working well, as well as it did in the Daytona 500. Now, is he playing that same activity that he did down there? Is he waiting this one out and then going to make that thrust as he so dramatically did and win that race? Bill Elliott is still in this. Remember, Elliott was second in the World 600 a year ago. He currently is shown in sixth spot right behind Dale Earnhardt. Elliott Thunderbird is running beautifully. But the General Motors cars, for the moment, have the advantage. It is Bobby Allison in the Miller High Life car number 22. The Buick of Allison is in first place. And then comes the number 28 car of Cale Yarborough. The Chevrolet is running in the second position for the Chevrolet uh, number 11 running in third, Waltrip Chevrolet, and then Bonnet Chevrolet. So the, the Chevys are getting a good stroke at first place. Earnhardt has won $5,000 for leading the most laps in the second 100-mile segment of the race. And I thought that started at the... Aha, uh -huh. all right. Lap 134 is the next time they're up for big money, but in the second 100 lap gathering, Earnhardt has already collected $5,000. Good for old Dale. He's having a wonderful day for Bud Moore and company. Bud Moore's had some winners over the years, and of course, Bobby Allison drove for him for a while. Let's go to Bill Connell. There's a battle between Bill Elliott and Darrell Walter about of turn number two and down the back straightaway. Elliott has just taken over the number three position, and riding fourth should be Walter. In fifth spot is Dale Earnhardt. Sixth would be Terry Labonte, and Richard Petty moves all the way up to seventh. Harry Gant is eighth, as he's in the high groove up in turn four. Cale Yarborough, that persistent little fellow from Timmonsville, South Carolina, the giant from Timmonsville and stock car racing, has moved up on the rear bumper of Bobby Allison's car, and he is ready to go for it, ready to stand on it and see if he can pull down first place. Allison with a four-car length advantage going into turn number three, but here comes Yarborough. Chubby little leg pull back from Sardis, South Carolina, shut it down the three-car length. He sweeps it high now at the banking of turn number four, and he's about four or five car lengths behind Allison.
about 120 laps are in the record book, and we'll give you a rundown on that. Actually, 121 complete, the 120 lap rundown upcoming, as still Allison holds on to the first position. Third spot, Bonnet. The fourth spot, Bill Elliott stays in the hunt, has moved around Darrell Walter for fourth. Walter is back into the fifth position. Then in the sixth spot is the number 15, the blue and yellow Wrangler car. And the word we've had is that everything is perfect on the Bud Moore car. How about it, Chuck Young? I understand Bud Moore is very pleased with the way things are going. No doubt about it, Ken. The uh, Wrangler machine is running probably as better, uh, at least of the three fours that are running up front as any of them. They're getting great tire wear on the car. That means that, of course, the chassis set up is dialed in just right. One of the faster cars on the racetrack right now, at least time-wise, is the Levi Garrett car number 98 of Joe Rutman. Rutman, of course, had that problem. They brought out the second caution earlier. They've gotten it fixed. Ricky Rudd's number three has come back on the track. It had gone to the garage area for some time. Seventh in this race is Terry Labonte. Then in the eighth position, it is Richard Petty. Falling back to ninth is Harry Gant. Gant is in ninth. Into the tenth position is Kyle Petty. Going eleventh is Benny Parsons. And in twelfth is Mark Martin. That says they stand at 100 at 125 coming up on the 125 lap report 120 laps complete that's pretty much the rundown let's see if we've had any other change we still have 13 cars being shown in the lead lap running a lap down 14th place car is baker the 15th place car is morgan shepherd the 16th is dave marcus the 17th is joe rutman he is a lap off the 18th position is the car eight of Bobby Hillen Jr. And that's a great run for this youngster who just graduated from high school two nights ago down in Texas, Midland, Texas. The 19th position is car 77, and that is Dean Combs. 20th position is Buddy Arrington, and the 21st position is the current rookie leader on the Winston Cup Tour, that champion spark plug program for Sterling Marlin. Let's take this 60-second break. This is the Performance Racing Network. Congratulations to Dale Earnhardt and the Wrangler Thunderbird. Dale was the leader of the most laps during the second 100 miles. And for driving so boldly, Dale Earnhardt wins an additional $5,000 in the $50,000 7-Eleven Super Lap Leader Award scorecard today. So congratulations to Dale Earnhardt, $5,000 richer after leading the most laps during the second 100 miles of today's 24th annual World 600. As the leaders come back down into the double dog leg, exit into turn one and two. It's Bobby Allison maintaining about a three car length lead over Cale Yarborough, who rests in second place. Then it's a pretty good distance back to third with Neil Bonnet, Bill Elliott running a close fourth, Darrell Waltrip in fifth, Dale Earnhardt runs sixth, followed by Terry Labonte, Richard Petty, Harry Gant, and Kyle Petty with a pretty good run today in the 7-Eleven Pontiac. And of course, Kyle would love nothing better than to get up front today, maybe in collect a bit of that 7-Eleven money. Lap number 134, another big lap in today's World 600. It will pay $5,000 to the winner. So look for Kale maybe to try to overhaul Bobby Allison when they get down to that point because lap 134 pays some big dollars today, $5,000 to the driver who leads lap number 134 in today's World 600, which was a complete sellout. Every ticket has been bought today on the front stretch. There's none left. Looks like Cale Yarborough is going to dip to the inside and try to take Bobby Allison at the start. It's going to be Cale Yarborough by just about half a hood length as Yarborough sticks the number 28 Hardy's machine out in front. But here comes Allison back on the outside. And number 22 swings low in front of Yarborough to regain the lead once again in turn two and pull away down the back stretch. Beautiful driving there by Bobby Allison to take the lead after Cale stuck his nose in front at the start-finish line. Here comes Benny Parsons in one of the Skull cars Number 55 into the pits. Benny had slowed down a couple of laps earlier. Benny Parsons in the pit in car number 55 getting service, and it looks like tires on the left side of that machine. Bobby Allison leads him back across the stripe. About six more laps to go, or five more, until lap 134 and $5,000. With you at the world-famous Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the World 600 is underway at 130 laps of competition, the 1980 champion of this event. Benny Parsons has just pitted and come back on the track 
We're 195 miles deep into the event. There are 270 laps remaining. Lap 134 has a $5,000 bonus from 7-Eleven stores, and there is a real war being waged between Bobby Allison in the Miller High Life car and the Hardy's restaurant car of Cale Yarborough for that position. And Bill Elliott is finding himself running fender to fender with Neil Bonnet at turn number one a little further back. That's a struggle for fourth position. What a battle, too. Bill Elliott was able to maintain down on the inside of the speedway and get by the Neil Bonnet automobile, so Elliott picks up the third position in the field as they come up on that lap money, and you can believe Cale Yarbrough is really going to lay the hammer down. All right, Allison is in front by just about six feet. As he comes back to the line at about 180 miles per hour, he'll just come out of the throttle a little, not use any brake as he goes into turn number one, and dropping down to the inside goes Cale Yarbrough as he's looking toward that big telesign as lap 133 will come up. There'll be a tremendous charge. The first time the 67th lap award came up, a $5,000 bonus. Bobby Allison won it, and most of the crowd here thought that the big telesign had malfunctioned. Smoke poured out, fireworks came up. It was to announce the $5,000 winner, but there were some distressed souls in the infield that thought they'd lost the scoreboard for the rest of the day. Now that they're a little more acclimated to it, they're watching in it very actively down there, watching those two cars on the board to see when it will announce that this one's for five grand for one mile and a half trip around the track. Those two leaders are in turn two by Bill Connell. Looks like Cale Yarbrough may be ready to make that move. It's worth $5,000. Down that back straightaway, they hit for three. Where he's trying to set Bobby Allison up for that big pass. They have about a lap and a quarter remaining until the big money lap fail. But Allison drops low now and pulls out to a three-car length advantage at the shoot off of four. Bill Elliott is resting in third. He is about four seconds back from the leaders right now. And now the smoke is in the air. The bombs are going off and into turn number one. There's the charge is on. Allison in front. Yarborough in second for an extra five grand. Yarborough goes to the outside. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to do it. Bobby Allison's going to try to pick up an extra $5,000 down that back straightaway. Two iron wheel drivers as they move into turn number three around slower traffic. This good work to Bobby Allison's advantage as he puts the Miller car in the high groove and another slower automobile right up in the groove and turn four with Gale trying to go low off of four. Allison had a slow car directly in front of him and had to come all the way out of the throttle. J.D. McDuffie had no place to go and finally made it through. And Cale Yarbrough got stuck in second place. Darn Cale, another $5,000 that you missed. It's Bobby Allison winning the second $5,000 prize. And he seems to be going at this like he was on the Pro Bowlers Tour, just waiting for the appropriate time to take the strikes. He has thus far collected three $5,000 bonuses in this race. And so the Allison family down in Hueytown ought to be eating very high on the hog in the next few weeks. Here they are, back to the line, with Bobby Allison right in front, and Yarborough tucked right on the rear bumper, just tapping him a little to say, that was yours, next time it's my turn, Robert. Down on the inside goes Yarborough. He still wants to take over the lead of the World 600. Outside is uh, Bobby Allison. They climb on the 17-degree banking. Yarborough's been driving a pretty consistent race, though. A safe race, midway down the back straightaway. Half a car length separation between those two championship drivers of the Winston Cup Grand National Division. Allison right down at the bottom, sticking there, able to maintain about a half a car length advantage. Here's Yarborough fighting back in the hardest car, off of four. Bobby Allison, who, won, who came here for the first time in 1966, won it for the first time in 1971 after starting on the outside of the front row as his hands fall in turn one as Yarborough won't let go. Yarborough down on the inside, Allison outside again there at war around this mile and a half, $35 million facility. Bill Elliott maintaining yeah, the third that's position. Trouble. Ken Reagan spins it out coming off of turn four. He's getting backwards. Now he straightens it out in the infield grass as he moves toward the start finish line and caution is out on the speedway, Ken. Caution coming on for the fourth time this afternoon as Reagan loses it in turn four, comes down across the grass, spins it all the way around. A bit of a hayride for number 97, Reagan. He's back underway, but the caution is out. And while the field reorganizes here, let's pause for this two-second, or rather two-minute announcement for our local stations. Two minutes. This is the Performance Racing Network. Car number 97, the Clinamid entry, takes a wild ride through the front grandstand grass right then as number 97, piloted by Ken Reagan, spins out, and that brings out caution number four on the day as it's been a pretty clean race so far as Ken Reagan 
Lost the handle on the Klinemann entry, spins it out into the grass, but he appears to be really no worse for wear as he fires his engine and takes back into the fray once again. So that's going to allow all your leaders to catch back up to that duo of Bobby Allison and Cale Yarborough. Bobby Allison, by the way, has already pocketed $15,000 today from the 7-Eleven folks for leading the most laps in the first, or leading lap 67, leading laps 134, and leading the most laps in the first 100 miles. So Bobby Allison has already collected quite a payday. Your leaders are in the pits. Here's Harry Gant, Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt. They're all in the pits getting service. Let's watch the race to get out of the pits. The Bobby Allison crew feverishly working under the direction of Gary Nelson with car number 22 to get him out. Let's look back up the row and look at Kale Yarborough. Number 28, he's being serviced. Leaders are still in the pits. Let's find out who's going to win the race out of the pits. Looks like number 11, the Junior Johnson crew, gets Darrell Waltrip underway pretty good. A little bit of trouble firing number 22, but Bobby Allison gets out in good shape. Here comes Neil Bonnick, Kale Yarborough, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Benny Parsons. The jack is down on Richard Petty. Here comes Harry Gant as they all go back into the fray, but it looks like Bobby Allison's crew, even though Allison's car looked like it cut off for a split second, wins the race to get their entry back in front in the World 600. So here goes Bobby Allison back down the back stretch as he wins the race out of the pits after the caution was brought out when Ken Reagan spun coming out of turn number four and took a sideways ride down through the grass in front of the main grandstands. So that's going to allow the field to tighten back up. Only four caution flags here in the first 135 laps of today's event. Not quite to the halfway point of this Marathon World 600 for 1982. Buddy Baker, the only man who has ridden in all 24 previous World 600s. Seven miles are down. Bill Elliott is making a tremendous run in his Ford Thunderbird today. Remember, he was second earlier this year at the Daytona Speedway and the Daytona 500, and he came right back and finished second again at Rockingham. And for a young man, 26, 27 years old, just barely getting the starting Grand National, he shows tremendous poise. For a youngster, he seems extremely conservative. And does Bill Elliott feel that that's true, and is it relevant to this World 600? Well, it, it's relevant to any race, more so here because you're running 600 miles. And I always felt like when I first started running, Richard Petty told me, he said, to finish first, first, you got to finish. And that's, that's held in my mind all my life. And I've, the, the races I first started in, I didn't finish a lot of races. And then when we got to where we could finish, we kept running a little better and a little better and a little better. You're not going to learn anything unless you finish the race. Right now, he's right in the thick of it as they get ready for a start. Let's quickly go to Darlene Dixon as we're preparing for a start with another guest here at the World 600. This is Darlene Dixon, and I'm in the press room, and a lot of the members of the press are going to be voting this afternoon for the Goody Headache Award. And with me is Tom Chambers, president of Goody Headache Powders. Tom, how do these members of the press select the Goody Headache Award? Well, they just uh, try to pick up the one that's had the hardest luck during the race, and uh, as a consolation, give them the Goody Headache Award, and then a $500 award, is, uh, cash award is given to that person. And so it just is a way of easing some bad event that's happened during the day. Well, we thought we were going to have to give Mr. H.A. Humpy Wheeler of the Goody Headache Award this morning when the showers were about to start, but sunshine's here and the great race is on for the World 600 and the Goodies Pole Day. Well, that's one time we was glad not to give it to Humpy because we want to get this great race in with all this great crowd here today. and. Uh, <laughs> We were uh, so glad the sun finally trying to break through and the race really going great. Thank you, Tom Chambers. Back to you, Ken Flower. Thank you, Darlene Dixon. And down in turn number one with a race just barely back under green. 141 laps complete. Out in front is Bobby Allison. Darrell Waltrip is in second. Terry Labonte is third. Neil Bonnet finds himself fourth. And Kaylee Yarborough is in fifth. They're into turn three. Senior member of the Alabama gang showing the way home at this stage of the race as he looks very good indeed off of turn four over Waltrip. And down here in third is Labonte. Fourth is Bonnet and fifth is Yarborough. D.K. Ulrich has just pitted in the sixth spot is Elliott, seventh 
is Earnhardt. Eight is Gant. And going ninth is Richard Petty at turn one. Twelve cars hooked together at 160 miles an hour. They're out of turn number two. And any one of the 12 could end up in victory circle later this afternoon. Right now, it's a challenge for second. Gigantic draft down that back straightaway in the challenge for second. But Lombardi goes high as he was trying to make his move on Walter, who maintains second. Now the move for second is by Bonnet. Bonnet gets down inside of Walter. 11th spot in this race is Lake Speed, going 12th is Mark Martin. Then a lap down in 13th position is Joe Rutman. 14th is Buddy Baker. 15th a lap down is Benny Parsons. And 16th is Morgan Shepard. Battle is at turn two. Neil Bonnet has just gotten back in the number two spot. Walter goes to third. Yarborough has dropped to fourth. Labonte fifth. Sixth is Elliott. Seventh is Harry Gant. Eighth, Earnhardt. Ninth is Rutman. What a gigantic land rush we have here in this first, second, and third turn. All the way around the speedway. And moving out to that big lead again is Bobby Allison with Tim Carling. Nine lead changes among five drivers thus far. The average speed is just 124 miles an hour, as we have had four cautions out here today. A lot of cars looking good, but Banjo Matthews, you have to think that Richard Petty is, is really in good shape out here. Oh, yeah, Richard Petty's sitting there, and I've continually watched him all day. He's just taking his time. He runs smooth through the corners. He doesn't look like he really has the horsepower down the straightaways, but... Uh, on the soft type of chassis setup he runs, he really runs more consistent. The, the leaders right now are the ones that kind of run stiff cars, and uh, uh, it shows up in tires as time goes on. Terry Labonte in the Budweiser car is beginning to make some moves. He's on the inside of Darrell Waltrip by Bill Cannell in the first and second turn. The run for the gold, and Labonte has got a lot of it in his eyes. He puts Waltrip upstairs. Earnhardt is nailed against the wall, so is Gant, but Labonte will not give up. He stays in the battle down the backstretch. It looks like though it's going to be Darrell Waltrip maintaining that advantage over Labonte. Back behind Labonte, it's the Gant car. Here comes Earnhardt coming on strong as he gets down inside of Harry Gant as they sweep it all before. Kyle Petty has dropped back into the 12th position right in front of him is Mark Martin and Lake Speed. There is a battle for 10th, 11th, and 12th, which is just as exciting and just as good as the battle for the lead. Labonte again goes door to door with Waltrip upstairs. Is, on the outside is Darrell. Downstairs is Terry Labonte. He has really put on a performance here this afternoon. One of the best of 1983. Dead heat down the chute. What a battle for Quite a battle for the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth spots as they go into turn number three. Labonte now takes over fourth. Walter drops back high to fifth. Here comes Gant down inside. Whoa! And they touch sheet metal. We've got cars touching. Coming off of four. And they brought Joe Roman down. Now spinning is the Pepsi car driven by Walter. He's down on the infield grass. Walter on the grass. As he got nailed, he's still sliding. He's way down in the grass by his lonesome. No caution as yet. Let's see if the car will fire. Darrell Waltrip mowing the grass as he came down through. He's falling way back. He's trying to get reorganized. He got tapped in turn four. He slid. He did a tremendous job of keeping the car out of the wall. And the Pepsi Challenger is going to have to challenge from further back. The leaders are coming around. They could put him a lap down right here. Allison coming by. Bonnet coming by. Yarborough in third. Labonte in fourth. It is Earnhardt in fifth. And Earnhardt has a lot of damage on the right-hand side of his car. It's Waltrip coming back to speed at turn number two. Leaders are closing on him, Bill Canal, as they go by you. Leaders are closing on Waltrip. Gant is showing a lot of damage on his car. He was the one, I think, trying to stick it in at three wide. All of a sudden, the haystack came loose. Here is Waltrip now about to be a lap down. He's going to have to pit, Ken. He stays out. Darrell Waltrip is staying out. He does not pit. Now, he has spun almost... 800 to 1,000 feet, and those tires, Banjo Matthews, just can't work that good after an incident like that. No, that's right, but he did it on the grass, and the grass doesn't normally wear the tires, so he's not in an unsafe condition. However, for the first 300 feet of that slide, he was up on the asphalt as they came out of four. It looked for all the world like he was going in the wall, and he did a masterful job of not trying to overcorrect. He took one stab at it. He actually gathered the car up once, and overcorrecting on asphalt can send you you slam into the wall. In fact, back here on Friday in qualifying, Rick Hanley was seriously injured as he tried to qualify for the Mellow Yellow 300 yesterday. He's in serious but stable condition here in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Memorial Hospital. Further tests and x-rays show that he uh, broke two arms, uh, one arm and two legs in that crash, and the 18-year-old driver from West Virginia uh, really had a terrible shunt into the wall. He tried to make a correction, turned the car a little too much, and it took 
took the wall square, head on, and it rocked the front end back about a foot and a half, and he wasn't going quite as fast as Darrell Waltrip was, but there's the difference, that 18-year-old really getting the job done. Now, here's that bat a little further back, Terry Labonte being challenged by Earnhardt. They are fighting for the fourth position, and believe me, Dale Earnhardt has really got his dander up. He is beginning to fly. Mike Joy here with Richard Petty. Richard, you've sure had some ups and downs in your long racing career. Well, I've had plenty of headaches over the years, you can bet that, and, and I'll have plenty in the future. Bobby Allison pulls up to the back rear deck lid of Darrell Waltrip as they come out of turn number four. Allison will be trying to put the defending Winston Cup Grand National Champion down a lap as they go across the stripe. It's Bobby Allison about four car lengths behind Darrell Waltrip who took a wild ride just a moment ago down through the grass in front of the main grandstands. Darrell did a masterful job, though, to keep it out of the wall. He did a good bit of driving just to save number 11, the Pepsi Challenger, from really serious damage, but he probably scuffed his tires up on the asphalt, slowing that Junior Johnson entry down. And now Bobby Allison makes a move to the outside of Darrell Waltrip. Allison pulls up along beside Waltrip out of turn number four and tries to put Darrell Waltrip one lap down as they come to the stripe. Allison gets by number 11, and Waltrip drops a lap down to the field after spinning it out and going through the infield grass. Bobby Allison able to catch Darrell Waltrip, and Waltrip's going to have his work cut out for him today to catch that rabbit Allison who has been so tough here in the first 150 so laps of today's World 600. Cale Yarber about 30 car lengths back, about a second back in second place. Third place runner right now is going to be car 75 of Neil Bonnet with Terry Labonte just being passed by Dale Earnhardt. So Earnhardt moves to fourth, Labonte back to fifth. Then it'll be Harry Gant and Richard Petty as they complete 154 laps of the World 600. Bobby Allison continues to be the strongest entry of the day in car number 22. And Allison started relatively far back in the field in that particular entry. Started from the 13th position in the Miller High Life Buick, but so far has been the man to beat today. And he's on the point right now as they head down the back stretch. Once again, Bobby Allison, who has put Darrell Waltrip a lap down. Cale Yarborough will now try to catch up to Waltrip and try to also put Darrell behind him another lap down as Waltrip continues to hang on right now, running second in the order, but one lap down. Just been put a lap down by Bobby Allison, and Chuck Young is standing by in the pits of Darrell Waltrip. Well, Ken Squire, there is uh, not going to be a pit stop, at least in the present moment, for Darrell Waltrip. Obviously, due to the fact they don't want to go two laps down, right now the Pepsi Challenger crew, Junior Johnson, they're standing against the wall. Yes, they are getting some tires ready just in case the caution should come out, and they will, of course, obviously sit under caution. But right now, they're going to have to stay out there, and they are a lap down, as you mentioned, back to the challenge. 155 laps, 232 and a half miles into the race. Bobby Allison showing tremendous strength here. Wanted to become the third man to win this race three times. David Pearson has done it. Buddy Baker has done it. The issue is, can Allison bring it off of the Nygaard Racing Team and the Miller High Life folks? Now, Miller High Life will come in here to sponsor what has been the National 500 come October. And uh, for Sam Bell Navis and company, Allison apparently is putting out a real strong effort, extra effort here today. I don't think you can fairly say that about Bobby Allison. He puts an extra effort into every race he has ever run in his life. We're down to a 160 lap run down in just three laps. Allison is in first. Kaylee Arborough is in second, maintaining that third position. Neil Bonnet doing a grand job for Warner Hodgson. Then in the fourth position, we see car number 15, and that is the Wrangler car. Earnhardt still in there right with the leaders all the way. And you really don't know who's showing everything they have to offer. In the 15th, or rather the 5th position, is car number 44, Neil Bonnet. And all of a sudden, after lying back for about 100 or so miles, Neil Bonnet makes his presence very well felt in this World 600 for half a million dollars. 7th is Harry Gant, going 8th is Richard Petty. In ninth, Elliott has fallen back a bit now. And the 10th position is Lake Speed with 11th Mark Martin. And the Mark Martin story is interesting there. He has switched cars twice and apparently has come up with the right combination. He continues to stay in that lead lap and fight it out. Penny Enterprises has produced a lot of winners in the World 600, Bill Connell. 
Well, they certainly have. As a matter of fact, the Pennies have kind of come up with about five. Although Richard has been uh, to Victory Lane only twice, they've had five wins here. 1975 and 1977, Jim Pasco was the first to take a penny car to that private real estate reserved only for the winners. In 1964, Marvin Panch and Buddy Baker won for the Pennies in 66 and 72. Joe Rutman, car number 98, is back on pit road. Number 98, Rutman, showing 13th overall in the event, is back on pit road. Coming up to 160 laps complete when the leaders come by this time. And Darrell Waltrip's automobile has fallen further back. He has now been lapped by not only Bobby Allison, but also by Kaylee Arborough. So those tires on Darrell Waltrip's car have got to, uh, well, what's that old Hank Williams song? The tires and tubes are doing fine, but the air is showing through, Banjo. Yeah, it's about right, you know. It's I guess it's one of those days that things aren't going just right for Daryl. And, uh, you know, I noticed with Bobby Allison and Kale that Bobby pulls Kale just a little bit down the straightaways. And that's kind of unusual when you have a, a Wally L. Wilson under your hood. So uh, if Bobby's car makes it all day long at that speed, it looks like he might win a race. The Bobby Allison car running well. There is a report that another car is running a little warm right now. The report is that the car that is currently being driven by by Neil Bonnet is having some problems, and it may be in the temperature department. Let's see if we can get any kind of a word from Chuck Young on that story. Anything to that, Chuck? Well, Ken, right now they're discussing something between uh, Barbara Hilly, who is half of that Raymock team that, of course, is owned half by Warner Hodgson, and Butch Mock. Right now we can't get a describable word from them because they're talking it over. Just as soon as I can get a word with them, we'll bring it right back. 162 laps are now in the record book, and it's still Bobby Allison's race with the Miller High Life car in first, the Hardy's restaurant car maintaining the second position, and Kaylee Arborough is in a position to strike. He is definitely coiled, and he is in a position where he can make a move on Allison. He rests about two and a half seconds back from the leader as he comes back to the line to complete lap 163. Allison showing a little muscle here, and Yarborough just playing that waiting game. The interesting thing now will be Waltrip and when he pits. A magnificent save by Waltrip after that terrible crash he had at Daytona in February. Remember, he was trying to make up a lap came out of turn three and at 180 miles an hour greeted the inside retaining wall and it really rang his bell. He was hurting the next week in Richmond, Virginia, but he drove it anyway. Now he's had almost a similar incident, but it didn't come out like losing a car. Instead, he's still in the hunt and he's got to pace himself. He's praying for a caution flag here that would allow him to move back into the lead lap to give him some tires and not go any further back. If he pits now, he can find himself a full lap and perhaps even two laps down. 165 laps will be complete this time. 247 and a half miles, 235 laps remaining in this half million dollar contest as Allison continues to persevere. He has dominated, he's picked up the bonus money. The issue is now, will he become the third man in history to win this race, the World 600, three times? Let's pause for this two minute local announcement and then we'll be returning with more of the action and the color of the 24th annual World 600 on the Performance Racing Network. Lap 165 goes by the board in the car number 22, the Miller High Life team driven by Bobby Allison continues to dominate here in the first half of today's World 600 as Bobby swings it out of turns three and four. Kel Yarborough running second. Neil Bonnet apparently may be a problem developing on car number 75. At least that's preliminary word out of the pits. It may be developing a heating problem. We'll kind of keep a wary eye on car number 75. Back in the fourth place spot, Dale Earnhardt who is running a good close fourth, and it's Terry Labonte, Harry Gant, and Richard Petty running in that order. And then following up Richard Petty, it's going to be Bill Elliott, Benny Parsons, running also very strong today in the Skull car number 55. So they head down the back stretch and back into the turns, three and four again, continues to be Bobby Allison on the point where he's been so strong today. Bobby has collected already $15,000 in lap leader award. The next magic lap is going to be lap number 200, and that'll be pay off the fourth installment of the $50,000 put up today by the 7-Eleven Company and their 7-Eleven Super Lap Leader Awards program today at the World 600. And Bobby Allison would love nothing better than to collect another $5,000. He's collected $15,000. Dale Earnhardt has collected 
$5,000. So Bobby Allison already with a nice payday here today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and continues to lead on the track as he tails Dale or Dale Yarborough out of turns three and four and back to the double dog leg, 1,000, 1,002, about a three and a half second lead for Bobby Allison as he brings him across the stripe once again in the 24th annual World 600. Looking back through the pack right now as Allison continues to lead with Yarborough running in second place. Neil Bonnet back about an equal distance in third with Dale Earnhardt in pretty good shape running fourth and it's going to be Terry Labonte, Harry Gant and Richard Petty. So a pretty good battle there between Earnhardt, Labonte, Gant and Petty. They're all running within just about a second of each other for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh on the speedway. Charlotte Motor Speedway, where Bobby Allison is attempting to commandeer his third World 600 victory. I'm Ken Squire, and delighted to have with me one of the legends of American motorsport, the winner of the annual Flock Brothers Award, because he has built more safe racing cars. Safe is a hard word to say in racing. The moment you say it, you usually heck someone. But there's no question that Banjo Matthews has an enviable record by any dimension you care to measure. And he's here with us today observing this race. And just a few moments ago was talking about the remarkable performance today of the giant Richard Petty in the SCP car. Now we're seeing the leader, Allison on pit road. Let's go to Chuck Young as Bobby Allison brings the Miller High Life car onto the pit road as he leads to the 170th lap. The Miller Time crew goes across the right side. We'll come up. Also just hitting was the Richard Childers Piedmont Airlines car of Ricky Rudd. He's back out, but the right side is up on Bobby Allison. It is a scheduled pit stop. Fuel goes in there, down and away. Very quick pit stop as we're up now for scheduled pit stops now, Ken Squire. So another of those precision pit stops, about 14 and a half seconds, a little lengthy there, maybe a second longer than they needed for two tires and gas puts Bobby Allison back in, but we should experience pit stops by all the leaders in the next few laps, Banjo Matthews. Yeah, it looks like it's about time for that, and uh, as Allison came pit down pit road, Ricky Rudd was in the way a little bit, so that should have cost him a couple extra seconds. The one thing about it is, not only is it the pit stop, but it's getting on pit road and getting off, and Allison and Pearson and Petty are three of the masters of that act. They are so smooth on pit road, and as Banjo Matthews pointed out, that was a real problem for Bobby Allison as Ricky Rudd who has been struck with problems all afternoon found himself back in the pits another time. Bill Cannell is in turns one and two covering the action today. Who's running smoothly there? Everybody but a whiz of a battle can between Earnhardt, Labonte, Gant and Petty. 172 laps gone and they're just hooked together out of turn two. We are nearing the halfway juncture of the race. Almost halfway into this World 600. Hope you're having a great Memorial Weekend wherever you are and hope you're enjoying this race. And a reminder to you, that there's one thing that this Winston Cup Tour proves 30 times a year in these battles for some $8 million. If you don't believe in seatbelts, just watch these guys. The very best in the business, they can have trouble, as we've seen twice today, an incredible 170-mile-an-hour wreck, and everybody walks away. If you're driving today and you don't believe in seatbelts, oh, my friend, you have something yet to learn. Think about it, please. On the back straightaway, the battle developing. Here's Earnhardt being challenged for third position. It's Labonte down on the inside there in turn three. Labonte has a nose out in front, down in the bottom of turn three. Now he fronts Earnhardt as they take it up toward the wall around slower traffic. So it'll be Labonte, Earnhardt, Kent, and Petty, that quadruple group there, coming down the front straightaway across the strike. Upland, California is Joe Rutman pitting the Levi Garrett car another time. The action back in turn one. And Gant is very loose coming into turn number one. He goes upstairs trying to get around Earnhardt. Earnhardt Rick drops down into the racing group. Labonte is pulling away from that pack. Richard Petty looks like he's ready to put a move on. Petty's been running very well today, and he's moved up gradually so that now he's up there in the top delegation. The four automobiles led by Labonte pulling it off the deep part of turn four. Labonte, Earnhardt, Gant, and Petty in that order. Cale Yarborough working on $4 million in earnings out in front at the present time as he goes into that turn. Cale a, million, Cale a millionaire four times over with that tremendous victory head at Daytona. Here he is running just beautifully in the back straightaway. Interesting, this car that Yarborough is using, he will also use in the upcoming races at uh, 
at Pocono, Pennsylvania, and then go right on to Michigan. They are a little behind in their race cars at uh, Waddell Wilson Shop, and they're trying to finish off another car for the Firecracker 400 on the 4th of July at Daytona Beach. But right now, they are putting a lot of effort on this one particular car. And they really don't have that much bench strength in reserve cars like the Die Guard team and some of the other teams have, Banjo. Uh, well, you know, they buy their cars from somebody beside me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they used to race my cars all the time, and they got doing what they're doing. And uh, they like the top suspension Bobby Allison does. And, uh, you know, everybody has their own choice to do what they want to do. Bobby Allison has led three times for 104 laps in this race. Allison has been the dominant factor as we near the halfway point. At halfway, we will have 200 laps complete, and that 200th lap will be worth an additional $5,000 from 7-Eleven stores. So look out. We're bound to get hooked up into another mad scramble for the lead at the 200th and halfway mark, which will make the race official, and then should inclement weather ensue, we'll be okay to the end of the race. Battle for third, Great kid. battle going down into turn three. Labonte takes over that spot as he moves around the car driven by Neil Bonnet takes over second. Now Bonnet gets high, and here's Dale Earnhardt on the move as he charges off a of four. Up comes Terry Labonte into second. Bonnet falls to third. Earnhardt is in fourth. The Skull Bandit Harry Gant is in fifth. And looking stronger and stronger, the old adage, Banjo, if Richard Petty is anywhere near the front at the halfway mark, you might as well close the toolbox and go home. Well, you know, he's really getting close now. Well, it, you know, as he gets older, he just gets better and better. He's won two races this year, trying to be the first man, the only man in history to ever win 200. Here comes Earnhardt, back to the inside, unbonded at turn four. And he has him off of turn four by one car length, but Bonnet will have none of that. It looks like he's going to try it again down the double dog leg. And Harry Gant moves in. And they put him up in double file to Bill Canal at turn one. Aaron Hart inside, outside Bonnet. Then comes Gannon Petty. Petty may take them all on the outside. No, Bonnet will shut the door on him out of turn number two. Gannon is still beneath him on the apron area. Here comes Petty. They may go three wide on the back shoot. What a dynamic dash down that back straight away. Look at Labonte on the charge now as he pulls away from that little grouping. As he's in second spot back at third, Aaron Hart. Fourth is uh, Bonnet. Fifth is Gannon. Sixth is Petty. 180 laps complete, 270 miles in the record book this time. Give it to Yarborough, 20 laps to go to the halfway mark, 20 laps to go to make this race official this afternoon. Yarborough is on that point, Terry Labonte, what a great run for Labonte, broke his leg in a serious crash at Riverside, California in the Winston Cup finale last year at Riverside, California. This is his best showing thus far this year. Will Labonte be around? Remember, many of the leading drivers had said the World 600 this year will see an upset. It will not go back to those to the big five, the summit meeting of Grand National Racing. We'll wait and see, and no, not too far away, perhaps an hour and a half or so from now, we'll really have a better idea of how this race will unravel and who will greet us in victory lane. Get when the fastest, wildest, winningest driver on the stock car circuit dresses up like a chicken, the feathers fly. Burt Reynolds is... Terry Labonte has settled into second place here in the World 600, looking stronger and stronger in that Billy Hagen, Walter Wood entry as Terry Labonte has moved up into second in front of that pack of cars battling for third, Earnhardt, Bonnet, Gann, and Petty as they cross the stripe. Six cars within striking distance. There's Bill Elliott. He runs seventh, and Elliott has looked strong today in his Thunderbird throughout the day. Cale Yarborough, though, the Daytona 500 winner, the winner of the Coca-Cola 500 at Atlanta, Georgia, continues to pace the field today after Bobby Allison made an unscheduled stop. It's cost him about 15 seconds on the speedway, and number 28 continues to chew up the real estate here in the 24th Annual World 600. It's a good distance back, though, to second place and the Terry Labonte car. Now Harry Gann and Neil Bonnet battle for that fourth-place spot. Gant takes a look to the inside. Nowhere to go there as Bonnet continues to lead as they go into turn three and four. Here comes the Skull Bandit up underneath Neil Bonnet. He makes his move, and Gant moves up a position. He'll take fourth away from Neil Bonnet. Richard Petty will challenge down the backstretch. It's Gant, Bonnet, and Petty in the backstretch battling for fourth, fifth, and sixth position here in the World 600 as they close in on the 200-mile mark. Bonnet slips high. Richard Petty slips underneath, and Petty takes fifth position away from Neil Bonnet and the crowd erupts here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as for the first time today Richard Petty may appear on the scoreboard in the front five 
as he slips by Neil Bonnet coming out of turn number four when Bonnet got a little bit high that time. But Cale Yarborough, the man with the hot foot right now, continues to pull away here in the World 600. As that Hardy's machine looks stronger and stronger. the Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Hardy's restaurant car of Cale Yarborough has everybody covered. Leading, Yarborough, trying to win it. He's never won the World 600. He's won everything else. But here on this racetrack for Cale Yarborough, it has never come together. And they've been kidding him about it, saying, it's your turn, but it never has been. Today, he looks like he's trying to make amends for all those years when Cale Yarborough came so very close. The pit stop contest for those pit crews down on pit road, the Ingersoll Ram program, is just as intense among those people as it is among the superheroes out here on the track. And for a report on the pit stop contest, let's go to Chuck Young. Apparently we're having a problem getting to Chuck Young at this moment. Let's, let's again go to Chuck Young. Hello. After four stops, Ken Squire and the Ingersoll Rand pit crew standings. Four stops, the top four teams are within split second of each other. Dale Earnhardt's Wrangler team leads it. Second is Harry Gant. Third is Buddy Baker. And fourth is Bill Elliott. Once again, they're within just a half a second of each other. Those are your top four teams. We're going to get a report on Bobby Allison. That was an unscheduled pit stop they made laps ago, and we'll get a report back. Cale Yarborough, second in this race in 1970, second in 1975, third in 76, fourth in 78, 79, 82, a third in 81, but he's never had it go his way. He sat on the pole for this race, but he's never brought it home. And now today he is in front as we get close to the halfway mark. We are 12 laps away from the halfway distance as Yarborough is leading. And his interval, will check it off to the second place car, is a fairly healthy one now. It looks like about four and a half seconds. We'll give you an official time in a moment to Terry Labonte running in second, maintaining that third spot is Dale Earnhardt, and the fourth spot is Harry Gant, and moving up into fifth is Richard Petty as Neil Bonnet has dropped into sixth position. Remember, we had a report a bit ago. The interval now is shown as six and seven tenths of a second between first and second as Cale Yarborough is beginning to build an advantage larger than anyone has had thus far today. At Indianapolis, Tom Sneva leading after 60 laps. The report is that nine cars are in the lead lap. Sneva leading with nine cars in the lead lap. Here at 190 laps, we have 11 cars in the lead lap. And let me point out some of those cars in the back of that front lap. The ninth position is Lake Speed. Lake Speed in the Bullfrog Nets Uno car, number one, is running ninth. Tenth is Mark Martin in the Emanuel Zerbakas car. And running in 11th is the car number seven, the 7-Eleven stores car with Kyle Petty having a very good day, Bill Connell. Yes, he is, and he's been flawless through this first and second quarter all afternoon. We're coming up, as you said, almost... 300 miles down and 300 to go as we approach well into the mid-afternoon section and the clouds begin to lift here at Charlotte. Whoops, hold the phone. We understand there was a miscalculation in the Allison pits. They made it made a premature pit stop. Let's get the story from Chuck Young. No doubt about it, Ken. Uh, there was some, there might be some words over this. I really don't know, but uh, crew chief Gary Nelson just told me they just totally made a miscalculation and pitted at least 30 laps too soon. This could cost them, as you thousand dollars at the mid halfway because Bobby was well out in front. A miscalculation has caused them to pit at least 30 laps too soon, and that's a pretty bad mistake. But back to you. The Goodyear tire people have additional rubber all lined up to bring out to the cars. Meanwhile, that battle back in the field that's going on for 10th spot is just as good and just as strong as the battle for the lead. Here is Lake Speed driving a great race in the Uno Bullfrog Nets car, trying to stay in front of Mark Martin. And, of course, Mark Martin has so much to try and prove now. He's lost a ride. He took a ride with D.K. Ulrich briefly. Now he's in with Zavakas. Zavakas has built a new car, and the great builder out of Virginia is trying to give Martin a, a, a real shot at some real racing here, and that's what Mark Martin is doing right now. He's staying in that lap. They're working with Buddy Baker at the present time in between them. But the battle for 10th is indeed as interesting to watch as the battle for the lead. In fact, right now it's more interesting because Cale Yarborough with a six-second advantage, and in this kind of racing, that's almost ho-hum. 
lapping Bobby Wolak as he comes back down the main straightaway. Most forms of racing, a six-second advantage is figured as, as very, very close. Here on the Winston Cup Tour, gracious sake, six seconds seems an eternity before you find that second-place automobile. And right now, the battle for second is a rather heated debate. It's still Terry Labonte there. Battle for third is even more congested as we have a couple of cars ready to square off going down the back straightaway. And midway down the back stretch, it is Dale Earnhardt, Harry Gannon, Richard Petty. They're in three. Running single file at that portion of the speed. Way. Earnhardt pulls it off the turn number four, about two car lengths over Harry Gant, who's two car lengths further ahead of Petty. Dale Earnhardt, along with Harry Gant and Richard Petty, scutter back into turn number one as they come down beneath us in single file. But any moment, they're going to go around Darrell Waltrip as he gets further and further behind out of turn two. Official headquarters for the Performance Racing Network in Charlotte is the Radisson Hotel. Next time you visit the Queen... And that battle does continue back in that third spot, third, fourth, and fifth place at this moment. Of course, at the moment, of course, Cale Yarbrough in the lead, and behind him, Terry Labonte putting on a fine show, fine show for the Walter Wood Billy Hagen racing team. And there they are with Harry Gant trying to make the move on Dale Earnhardt. It can't happen as they go into turn one and up into turn two, and slipping back, Richard Peck. from 7-11 in that 200 lap if things keep going as they are now. Banjo, who looks good to you here besides Kale? Well, Bobby Allison seems to be gaining ground back up on the racetrack. You know, with fresh tires on, that gives them a spurt of speed. And uh, if they make it to a green flag pit stop, then it'll start changing the strategy around again. Four laps away from the halfway distance here in the World 600. Bobby Allison, 71 and 81, he's been the champion. Now there's been a miscalculation in his pits, and that can hurt them dearly. Forget about the $500,000 bonuses. At stake is one of the most important races on the entire $8 million Winston Cup Tour. And apparently they brought him in prematurely, and it could have dire effects. A caution flag would certainly be a, a blessing for Bobby Allison at this time. Three laps away now. It is still Yarborough in first, six second advantage. Terry Labonte has put the Budweiser car in second. The third place car is still Earnhardt in that fourth position, the number 33, the Skull Bandit with Harry Gant. And in fifth is Richard Petty. In the sixth spot is Neil Bonnet. Seventh is Bill Elliott. Eighth, West Allison. Ninth is Lake Speed. Tenth is Mark Martin. And the car number seven is now going a lap down. Seven, Kyle Petty, a lap down. In turn one, the Thunderbird hammered down. Dale Earnhardt has got Harry Gant along with Richard Petty there. They're in heavy lap traffic as they work off the banking in turns one and two. It's three stories high, like a wall in an apartment store. Moving down the back stretch, they smooth it out. And the Ford strokes it down as they head to three. And that's where the yellow and blue number 15 car, driven by Dale Earnhardt, takes the low groove, handling very well. Gant, three car leaks on the back, and watch Richard Petty in fifth as he tries to run. Also, and Neil Bott has been losing ground as he's handling loose and down pit road goes Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt is pitting as we go to the 200th lap for $5,000. Cale Yarbrough taking a tour of the racetrack. A bonus of five grand here for the Hardy's restaurant car number 28. As it's pretty easy for this one before he was, remember, in hot contention with the car number 22 of Bobby Allison. Now Allison is in dire straits. They apparently miscalculated a pit stop. We have cars on pit road. Earnhardt has come in, and now Mark Martin, the 10th place car, is also pitting. 10th place Martin is in. Earnhardt started in and backed up. There's something to miss there. He came out again. We'll get a report from Chuck Young on that situation. As 200 laps halfway in the World 600 has now been completed, and Yarborough is in a dominating position. Let's go to Darlene Dixon in the suites for just a moment. We're uh, right here. I'm Darlene Dixon. We're up in the press box. I'm with Steve Crumwell, the regional manager for 7-Eleven. And we're watching smoke bombs go off over the trial line, indicating that the $5,000 award is now being awarded. Darlene, I think you know how happy we at 7-Eleven uh, are to be here and work with the Charlotte Motor Speedway to put together this uh, lap award. I guess the only thing we could wish is that Kyle were having a little better run to pick up some of that change. 
Well, 7-Eleven certainly is visible today. Smoke bombs have indicated to everybody sitting in the grandstand that the award money is being given to the drivers, and we certainly want to thank you people with Southland Corporation. Well, we want to thank the people at the Speedway and all the folks here in Charlotte for coming out, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. So stop by 7-Eleven. Back to you, Ken. Kelly Arborough just came in after picking up the bonus of $5,000. Now we see the other leaders sitting. Gad is in, Patty is in, and the Ford Thunderbird of Bill Elliott is pulling out the road. And there was a report that some smoke was showing on car number 28. So we have a new leader. It is Terry Labonte, now in car number 44, who has the point position in the race. Benny Parsons is pitting his car number 55, and this is a pit stop under green that is taking place. It will reverse some positions. We're at 202 laps. Gant comes back out with a skull bandit. Petty brings his Pontiac back out, and here comes the Thunderbird of Bill Elliott. Executive Vice President of Ford, Red Poling is here. You were the Grand Marshal today, sir. You must be delighted about the Ford performance with first, second, and third place coming out in pole position day to your cars. And so far, they're staying up on the scoreboard very well. well it's an exciting race, and we're pleased with the way the Thunderbirds are doing. Well, this looks like the old days, back when Freddie Lorenzen and Ned Jarrett and those people were contending on the Grand National Tour, sir. Absolutely. Ford is back in racing, and we're coming along, and things are improving each race. Of a great deal of interest to many folks who race on the short tracks of America. They've heard so much about a short track program that parts and pieces, as General Motors has developed for the Chevrolet cars, would be available, and they keep waiting to know when when is it going to happen with the Fords? Uh, we're working on that right now, and we'll have a program before too long. Well, it certainly is effective here with one, two, and three belonging to Ford in pole position qualifying. Bill Elliott doing such a grand job. You must be pleased about this youth movement, which seems to be supporting Ford. Very definitely, and with the new products we have, we think it's going to be even more important for us. Reaction to Charlotte Motor Speedway briefly, sir. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it's turned into be, be a beautiful day. Everything's right for the Charlotte 600. 130,000 people would agree with you, Red. Absolutely. Thank you for coming by for just a moment. Red Delightful Pauling. to be here. Red Pauling. Exactly. Harry Gant was in the wall. Gant is in trouble. Gant sliding along and getting himself back together again. And that could be a, a tire situation. He's come out of the throttle just a little. Let's go back and see if we can see that car number 33 coming around and see if he's okay. He is still running. He is still running, but he may have just barely creased the wall. Bill Cannell, what about it? He got the wall down at one and two, Ken, and coming out of the number two corner down the back straight away. He may show a little bit of damage, but Gann is staying on the surface, so he's due for a pit stop anyway. Now, there is a wholesale change of positions. Labate has also come in, and so there is a complete change of position. And while they sort them out, we have an opportunity to introduce another racer who comes to us from Great Britain. Mark Thatcher would like to have you here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, it's great to be here, and it's uh, what an imma immaculate event. It's really fantastic. Well, it doesn't compare with Brands Hatch, for instance, and the Druids, but it is unique to America. Would you like to take a stab at something like this? We remember your safari experience of a year ago, which made the American press. Uh, Grand National Racing is, is sort of generic to the United States. How would you feel about taking a shot at one of these cars? Well, uh, any racing driver would like to uh, at least have a, a gentle shot in one of these cars, but I'm not sure whether I'd like to leap into a, a Grand National car straight away. Um, but obviously, any racing driver would like to have a go. Um, and maybe we can organize something in the future, but uh, it's very interesting. And, uh, but it's a completely different technique, I've noticed. Indeed it is, and a 3,400, what you would call a saloon car, running like these cars do. Have you had an opportunity to really look at these cars? Yes, I've looked inside a couple of them. They, they seem to be very sturdily built, which is, as, as a driver is uh, very uh, reassuring. But uh, things are happening down there, so I think we'd better give it back to you. Harry Gant has just hit it another time. And he's well, a car that hit the wall, a car hit the wall over in turn number four. The number 80 automobile has just grazed the wall. He's pulling it down into the pits. Bob Seneca of Door, Michigan. No caution is on the track. No caution has come out. No caution has come out. Seneca is on pit road. It's uh, an experience that Mark Thatcher here, somebody just pointed out, the uh, son of the prime minister in uh, Great Britain. Uh, I'm sure you would be far, you'd be far happier being known as a pretty fair racer over there. There's a lot of things, and it's not really fair to say what I'm known best for. Um, uh, I would, I'm very proud of our family, and uh, I don't think you can really say anything else. Indeed. How does your mother feel about racing? Uh, she thinks other sports are better, but then again, who wouldn't? I mean, anybody who like anybody who has a mother who likes their son driving racing cars has got to be something funny anyway. It's not qualified to be prime minister. No, I don't think so. Delighted to have you here today, sir. 
Uh, finally, any reaction to the kind of audience you've seen here? You had a chance to mosey oh, around? Amazing. Um, obviously, in Grand Prix racing, we don't get as many people at the tracks, but I've never seen 135,000 people in one place at one time, and to me, it's uh, a whole new experience, and I hope that they enjoy the race. Off to Detroit? Hopefully next weekend, yep. I'm um, going around the country this week, and uh, hopefully I shall pitch up in Detroit on uh, Friday or Saturday. Nice to have you here. I hope you get the opportunity to come back. It's been a great pleasure, and I'd hope to come back as well. Thank you, Mark. Ken Squire, there's something bad wrong with Harry Gant's automobile. He pitted a moment ago. They changed rubber, fueled the car, but it's smoking badly down at one and two, and I don't know. Hill owners did what is it doing up there. Yes, it smokes every time through three and four. It would appear to be sheet metal smoke, as you know earlier. He greased the sheet metal down on the tires, and when he hit the lurch in turn three, four, it looks like he is rubbing the sheet metal against those tires, and of course, that could be a potential problem. We'll keep our eye on it. Waltrip is in the pits, and, and let's bring you up to date on the race. 210 laps are complete. With all of these pit stops, we now have Bobby Allison out in front. But remember, he did make an early pit stop, not quite the way they might have wished it. In the second place is Earnhardt. In the third place, Yarborough. And showing forth at the present time is Terry Labonte. Now, we're waiting to unscramble some other reports. They've shown us uh, in, in scoring number 44 in about three positions. So we'll get that straightened out for you and find out exactly where he's tethered. Chuck Young is in the pits of car number 33. As Bill Canal told you, he did have a minor skirmish with the wall. He continued on. It did not bring out a caution. Seneca grazed the wall. He pulled on the pit. Still no caution. But as to the condition of the Travis Trotter prepared number 33, let's find out right now. Well, Ken, it's unfortunate Harry's going to have to pit again. They are waiting on him. And Travis Carter watches him as he goes across the line again. And as you mentioned, when he popped the wall on the outside, it has pushed the right fender uh, quarter panel in on the tire. That's what the smoke is. They are going to have to come in and do some work on that and put on a new set of right side tires. Of course, they had just put on right side tires before he hit the wall. And that's a real problem for him. But we'll stay here in the Skull Bandit Pits to bring you up to date on that story changes among seven drivers we are more than halfway the race is now official and at halfway the sun has broken through it is a gorgeous day it is a lovely crowd and we're here with the 24th world 600 we're going to break for two minutes for our locals two minutes and 10 seconds local stations to give you an opportunity to identify yourself and share your messages with your audiences and then back with more of the performance racing network's coverage of the world 600 this is the performance racing network Bobby Allison taking that lead, of course, in the uh, 214th lap, taking it over to Cale Yarbrough at the moment. As we get ready for racing to continue this afternoon here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and racing to continue throughout the season, the Miller Time 300 October the 8th, the Miller 500 October the 9th, we say welcome to Miller Time this year here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And Ray Melton, something very special about to occur in conjunction with those races. Well, the race will be publicized very highly, Bill, and the 37th annual running of the Oyster Bowl football game pitting Yale versus William and Mary at Foreman Field in Norfolk, Virginia on Saturday, October the 1st. And then it will also be publicized at the 1983 Virginia State Fair at the State Fairgrounds in Richmond, Virginia on September the 22nd, running through October the 2nd. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you very much, Ray Melton. Bill Dollar, along with Ray at the moment, as we continue. And the lap number 215, Bobby Allison, in, in, in spite of an early call on a pit stop just a little while ago, 30 laps early, came back to take the lead with that strong Dygard Racing Team Chevrolet. So Bobby Allison continuing lap 216. As Cale Yarbrough, who of course picked up the lap 200 award and the lap leader super laps award this afternoon, that $50,000 first adding all the money into the extra kitty for the racers this afternoon to charge and much further ahead here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. So it's Bobby Allison, Cale Yarbrough, Terry Labonte, Terry in that Billy Hagen, Walter Wood race car for Budweiser into that fourth slot after leading a little bit of that last few hundred laps, last 200 laps, leading just a little while. Bobby Allison taking that commanding lead. Dale Earnhardt well back in the pack there. 
and we're ready to go back to the Performance Racing Network. Weekend, we are now 216 laps into this 400 lap event. We have six cars running in the lead lap. They are, in first place, Bobby Allison. In second place, Kaylee Yarborough. In the third position, Terry Labonte. Showing in the fourth position, Bill Elliott. In fifth is Richard Petty. And sixth is Neil Bonnet. Running seventh, a lap down, is Darrell Waltrip. In eighth, also being shown a lap down. Remember, these are, we're into a green flag pit stop situation. In eighth, they're reporting Earnhardt. In ninth is Lake Speed. Tenth, Harry Gant. Eleventh would be Mark Martin. And twelfth, Kyle Petty. The thirteenth, Buddy Baker. The fourteenth position to Morgan Shepard. And fifteenth to Joe Rutman. Joe Rutman now three laps down. Two laps down are Baker, Morgan Shepard, Kyle Petty. Let's check on the attrition. Those cars out of the race. Here's that story from Pat Patterson. Well, Ken, as we are going into the... Yeah, Petty's been running real high the last few laps. He's almost done for a long time. Ken? Let's go back to Pat Patterson. Okay, Ken, as we are into the second half of the race, uh, starting numerically, David Pearson in car, of course, number 16. Is that what's that? Car number 27, Tim Richmond, is behind the wall. 47 of Ron Bouchard. 52 of Jimmy Mead, 64 of Tommy Gale, 88 of Jeff Bodine, and car number 90 of Dick Brooks. And an interesting note, a lot of credit has got to go to the Piedmont crew for getting that car back out onto the racetrack. That's the story at this point. Back up to you, Ken. 220 laps complete this time by, 330 miles, 180 laps remaining. Six cars in the lead lap. All right, how are you betting now, Banjo Matthews? Well, I don't know. It's a mixed up with Allison stopping in the middle of the thing, but Allison has actually made up a, uh, half of a lap on Gale since that uh, mid-pit stop. So if they pit again and Allison made another half a lap up, uh, that pit stop wouldn't bother anything. Right now, let's check on the interval between the first and second place cars. With that story, here's Bill Canal down in turn one. Well, Kill Yarborough is handling flawlessly, but he's lost a lot of ground. Bobby Allison is just able to manipulate this track anywhere he wants to. However, the groove is working higher and higher in turns one and two. The track, as the late afternoon grows near, seems to get a little softer. And you can see where they painted the stripes. It's all worn away. Right now, though, about a half lap separating first and second. In heavy traffic, Allison comes across the start-finish line. He clears out three automobiles. The second-place car, Yarborough in the 28, and it is perhaps more than a half-lap by which Bobby Allison now has the advantage. Here's Richard Petty being passed by Harry Gant as they come through four. In the low groove goes Gant as he gets around Petty. We've noticed Richard right up on that outside retaining wall the last several times by, and many of these cars, as Bill Cannell was mentioning, are handling right up at the top of the racetrack, past the series of signs in the turn three and four area. So the track is getting a bit slippery. You can see tire now. The rubber works all the way up, about halfway up between that upper broken line and the wall here in turn three and four, Ken. Well, it would be too early to presume that Bobby Allison has this race in the bag, although he has a half-lap advantage. Uh, a lot of false security out for him right now, as uh, the word is that there was a miscalculation on his pit stop. They brought him in a little too early after the others made their regularly scheduled pit stop. It has made him look very, very good, but that may be simply an imitation of something that he would hope would be far tougher. It, it, uh, put him further back up in the race. He has the half lap advantage, but he will have to pit before the rest, and then he'll have to look probably from a quarter of a lap or a third lap down at least to some of these cars. We'll just have to watch and see what happens with the Miller High Life car and Bobby Allison as the day progresses. The issue is a caution flag for Allison. I'm sure that they would give anything. Sheila Snipes, Sheila Snipes in the David Allison suite, call 201. Sheila Snipes to the David Allison suite, call 201. He was in turn number four, and it looked like good night nurse as he came out of there, slid all the way down the asphalt about 600 feet to the grass, and... We need a sheriff. We need a sheriff at the top of the hill in the road course. See the Stella Motor Speedway security people? We need a sheriff at the top of the hill in the road course. 
See the Charlotte Motor Speedway security people, please. Another lap down, so not all is well. You, you can't slide a car for 800 feet without bending something on the bottom side of it, Banjo. Well, I don't think you can, but, you know, it just looks like today's the day that Darrell's not really up on the chassis. Jim and them haven't hit the right thing. They're a lap or two down. Um, you know, the Pepsi Challenger still runs good down the straightaway like I see it right now, but he's just not cornering like he's used to. At lap 267, there was another $5,000 bonus from 7-Eleven stores at lap 267 today. Now six cars reported in the lead lap with a tail ender in that sex set, the number 75 of Neil Bonnet. Lead car is 22, Allison, seeking to become the third man to win it three times. Dale Yarborough trying to win it for the first time, and that seems incredible with the long history of Cale Yarborough in this racetrack. Again to Bill Connell. A real battle has been going on that's been unnoticed between Morgan Shepard and Mark Martin. They have hammered away, diced and shuffled all afternoon, zigzagging their positions down the back straightaway. Right now, Morgan Shepard is putting a move on Mark Martin. They are two laps down going into turn three. We're watching them now as they come off of that turn four area now. And here's Mark Martin first and Morgan Shepard in second in that order. They're not that way in the race as they cross the stripe in front of the tower. The Activision car of Mark Martin going back to turn number one, holding on, sustaining over Morgan Shepard at the present time. Morgan twice a winner in the sportsman race on Saturday, but yesterday had trouble and was not able to complete the event. Back to Pat Patterson in the garage area. Okay, I'm standing by with Benny Parsons, the Skull Buick. Benny is in the garage at this time. Benny, what happened out there? I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I made a routine pit stop, put the car in first gear. When they finished, completed the pit stop, and they changed the tires, uh, they let the jack down, which is a signal to go. I let the clutch out to go, and nothing happened. Uh, we've done some preliminary checking. We think, uh, we just think, that the uh, rear end broke. You know, when I let the clutch out, that it snapped uh, something in the rear end loose. Seems like you'd been running fairly steadily all afternoon, and uh, I guess the car was handling okay for you? No, I, we just never did get it dialed in. We had a flat tire the first uh, pit stop. Uh, had a The right front tire was had a slow leak, and it had caused the car to react and make the chassis do something that I thought we had a problem. We adjusted for it. Uh, didn't find the flat tire until the green flag was back out. Then we was really messed up, and uh, we basically spent all day trying to catch up. Well, I know there's a lot of Skull fans here in Charlotte that were pulling for you today, and it's tough that you're out of it, but we'll see Benny back next week. Let's go well, back one up. thing about it, if, you know, if, the, if there's some Skull people up there, we've got to hurry again. Oh, yeah. They're still out there. All right, back to you, Ken Squire. But Terry Labonte is out of it. He came across the start-finish line slowly, and as they worked the 229th lap, he is all the way down on the apron coming around turn three and four in the red white numeral car number 44. Here he comes, the Walter Wood car. And Ken Squire, I saw that engine erupt. He cut it off immediately, but it did erupt in front of you there at the start finish line, just briefly, carrying alertly, cut the power on that car and kept from putting down oil. And now there are five cars in the lead lap as Terry Labonte retires, number 44 going back to the garage area. This is Mike Joy with seven-time NASCAR champion. In fact, I was, this is Bill Dollar, and I was down in the uh, Skull Suite talking to Walter Wood of the Billy Hagan-Walter Wood team, and he said he expected Billy and hoped that uh, he and the Billy, along with Terry Labonte, Terry would have a very good run this afternoon in the number 44 Budweiser car, but it all depended on how well the car held together. Terry, a very strong driver, but expected the possibility of some sort of a problem. Hope not, of course, and then again the engine. We'll find out later on the Performance Racing Network, of course what exactly did happen with that Terry Labonte Budweiser car. Still a commanding lead, Bobby Allison, who is almost due a pit stop at this moment, getting ready for that, I'm sure, and then the number two slot, Bill Elliott, and that's Dawsonville, Georgia gang, and that number nine machine, and the number 28 car, Cale Yarbrough. Cale Yarbrough, followed by in the third, fourth position, Richard Petty, and the number 75 car, Neil Bonnet. Charlotte Motor Speedway, 24th running of the World 600 this afternoon. 233 laps down and 100 and, oh, 167 laps to go this afternoon at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for 600 miles. Back to Performance Racing Network. Kelly Yarborough, fourth is Richard Petty, and going fifth is Neil Bonnet. With the destruction of the motor on car number 44, the Terry Labonte car, five cars are in the lead lap, moving up into the sixth position. But a lap down is the... Car number 15, 
and that is Dale Earnhardt's Wrangler machine. Then moving into the seventh position now is car number one, Lake Speed. Going to eighth is Harry Gant. Into the ninth position is car number 11, Waltrip. And into tenth is Mark Martin in that battle with Morgan Shepard. I've been watching the Morgan Shepard automobile come through the corner down here at one and two, but Richard Petty and Cale Yarbrough have shaped up their own battle on the track position-wise. Bill Elliott is flawless down here, though. That car handling magnificently. The X school principal from the Northwest, Tom Sneva, has won the Indianapolis 500 by 11 seconds. Tom Sneva, victorious over Al Unser second and Rick Mears in third at Indianapolis today. Our congratulations certainly to Tom Sneva, a great race driver, a fine man, and a pretty good second baseman on anybody's softball team. Joe Rutman is back on pit road. Car number 98, the Levi Garrett car, is in. Repeating, Tom Sneva has won Indianapolis this afternoon. Here at Charlotte, we're 236 laps into the World 600. 354 miles have been completed. We started under rather grismal skies with spots of rain. There was no caution thrown for the... Will Kim Seabrook, Kim Seabrook call home? An emergency. Kim Seabrook call home and it's an emergency. Right up with a bumper of Cale Yarbrough is Richard Petty. 237 laps into this 600-mile confrontation. And Petty, it was like a statement made earlier by you, Ken Squire, and Banjo Matthews. If Petty's around at the halfway point, look out. He's on the move. The veteran campaigner Richard Petty closing up on the back deck lid. Now that car driven by Cale Yarbrough. Petty's been taking the high lines. Return three and four. Takes it right up to the wall all four while Cale takes the low road. Petty closes up off of four. As they come back to the stripe, the orange and white colors of the Hardy's restaurant people, number 28, Cale Yarborough has that position. He lies third, Richard Petty in his wake as they go back to turn one. Richard Petty, single file, chewing away on that bumper out of turn two, goes to the outside, changes his mind, Yarborough, they go single file, now that 2,000 foot back straight away. The man they call the king runs nose to tail with Cale Yarborough, two of NASCAR's finest, still taking that high line as Richard Petty skittering along that wall, but he's taking a line around that moves him through quickly as he moves up on Cale. And Neil Bonnet gathers himself up into that hunt. Neil Bonnet coming up. He is gathering speed all the time, closing it on Petty. It's a three-car battle at turn one. Single file up high, and that groove continues to move closer to the outside retaining, retaining wall. Petty now looks like he'd like to have that number three spot. Bill Elliott's far out of the number two position. It's Petty, Bonnet, Yarborough leads him on a point. Three different makes of automobiles, a Chevrolet, a Pontiac, another Chevrolet. It's actually two makes of cars, but Cale Yarborough rides third, Petty is fourth, and the Bonnet car in fifth spot. Quick report for the garage area. Here's Pat Patterson. Okay, I'm standing by with the pilot of the Budweiser car, Terry Labonte, out of it today. Terry, what happened out on the track? Well, what happened, uh, only the drive of the oil pump slid off and uh, made the oil pump belt come off, so we lost oil pressure and uh, messed up the engine. Is the racetrack pretty slick at this point, Terry? Well, the racetrack's a little slick, but Dale Lemon and uh, all the Budweiser guys really had my car working good. And, uh, you know, I really wasn't having any problems. Okay, that's a report on the Bud crew. Back to you, Ken. Battle is still enjoined for that third position overall in the race. Cale has it. Here's Richard Petty up high. Neil Bonnet low as they come down out of four. Back in front of us here at the start-finish line. Richard Petty is now moving on the outside of Cale Yarborough, going to turn number one. Lap cars in front of them. Richard Petty loves to run high, and that's what he's doing. He'll take him. He gets Yarborough in turn number one. Yarborough will drop back to fourth. Now Neil Bonnet's going to go to the outside of him, but take over the number three position, or actually the fourth position. Petty's in third. Fourth would be Bonnet. Yarborough would be in fifth. Crowd's on its feet as these three veteran campaigners battle down the back straightaway. Petty's still taking the high road over in turn four now. Dropping low is Bonnet, who rides fourth. This spot to Hardy Star with Cale Yarborough aboard. Let's check the tire story. Here's Chuck Young. Well, we do have an interesting tire story, but the real story is here in Bobby Allison's pit. Bobby just came in. Gary Nelson, his crew chief. Gary, you just came in. What have you done and why? Well, that was a, that was a scheduled stop that we had to make. We were out of fuel, changed right side tires. Uh, I mean, if we had not fouled up on that stop earlier, we'd still, still be out there leading the race. Right now, we're in second place, six seconds behind the leader, so we don't feel too bad. Okay, that's Gary Nelson, crew chief on the Miller Time Machine of Bobby Allison. Mandatory pit stop due to the earlier miscalculation.
Constellation. And Ken, here in just a few moments, I'll bring you that Goodyear tire story. Mark Martin just came out of turn four sideways in the Activision car. He was able to gather it up and keep going, but directly in behind him was Bill Elliott, the number nine car. Martin running a lap down, and that car looked really loose, the Activision car. Here's Petty way high. Petty is now all the way to the outside of the racetrack, as is Bonnet, as is Yarborough. We're going to take a two-minute break for our local stations and then back with more of the World 600 here on the Performance Racing Network. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the site, of course, of the World 600 today. This is Bill Dollar, and I'm Tower Side, and at the end of the race today, I'll be with Bill Hennessy and Bill Cannell of the Performance Racing Network as we wrap up the events this afternoon at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well into the completion of the race, and the fact that if it did rain this afternoon, of course, the rain has passed us by, but if it did rain, we are well over at the 50% mark, so into this race with 242 laps, approaching that fourth out of five, for 334 laps total, approaching the 267 lap mark to see who the next lap leader is going to be for that next $5,000 award for the one who's going to be leading at that lap and leading the most laps since that 200 mark lap. Don't forget as you make your plans for the fall this year, October the 8th and October the 9th, it will be the Miller Time 300 and for the first time, the Miller 500. It will be definitely Miller time here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway when this fall, October the 8th and 9th, the 300 and 500 mile races here at the Speedway for Sportsman and Grand National Racing will be under the sponsorship of those fine folks from Sam Bell Davis and from Miller Brewing Company. It continues to be Neil, excuse me, Bill Elliott, followed by Bobby Allison, Richard Petty, Neil Bonnet, and Cale Yarbrough in the top five slots here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Pit area at the moment. Rick Newsom pulls in. Rick Newsom pulling into the pit areas at the moment. And the number 02 car from Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Number 01 car, Mark Martin, having a little bit of trouble. Number 9 car, Bill Elliott, the Dawsonville, Georgia folks, the Elliott family who put that team together and done such a fine job over the last couple of years. Bill Elliott, of course, finishing in second place during the last couple of races here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Back to the Performance Racing Network. All right, and that means it's time for Copenhagen. NASCAR driver Cale Yarborough talks about how much he enjoys Copenhagen moist tobacco. White times and Copenhagen just kind of go together. Cause Co Goody's Headache Powder, Mellow Yellow, Miller High Life Beer, all part of the many sponsors who are making it possible along with Goodyear, and, of course, for the Winston Cup Series, Coca-Cola joining in. Pioneer, who made it possible, along with all the folks at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Ford Motor Company. Gant pulls in to the pits. Gant having trouble this afternoon, looking very sloppy in that fourth turn this afternoon. A chassis that's evidently getting a little bit loose or maybe tire trouble. I'm sure we'll find out what the problem is when we go to report for the Performance Racing Network in just a moment. The Skull Bandit in the pits for the moment. They're pulling up the right side, changing the tires. Hopefully it is just tire trouble. It's a problem that has plagued Harry in that Skull Bandit race car for the last couple of years. There have been a lot of tire troubles here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, especially for Harry. Now back to PRN. Well, Grant has brought the Skull Bandit back in. They're going to the right side of the machine. As you remember earlier, about 25 laps ago, when, when Harry got into the wall, he bent the right side quarter panel down on the tire. They wanted to pit then, but they elected not to. Now it's a mandatory situation as the tire was going down. And uh, the Skull Bandit, though, is taking a good bit of a time with the car. They put the gas in. They're having some problem with the right front. We'll get over and find the real story and bring it back to you. We want to welcome our listeners in Indianapolis, Milwaukee, Tampa, you folks up in Atlanta with us today for the World 600 as we journey to 250 laps of the World 600. 250 laps this time by 375 miles will be completed with five cars in the lead lap. Bobby Allison, things seem to be from a strategy standpoint, if it goes like it is now, working out for Allison Banjo. Well, it looks like it's right towards the end of the race. All he has to do is put a little fuel in. Uh, the next time Elliot pits, Elliot's going to be a pretty good ways behind him. And this is an unusual race with the least amount of caution flags. And in years past, the car makes intermediate pit stops on fresh tires and gains all that distance. 
Uh, sometimes they win the race. Harry Gant's car is still up. They're still working underneath the front end, and he is dropping more laps down. Bill Elliott has appropriated the front position in the race by way of Bobby Allison's pit stop. Allison pitting a little out of the regular sequence of the others. And now Harry Gant's car is going to be rolled back. I, I don't know if they're trying to start it. They're going to put it back. It may be tooth finney for car 33. What a bad break for Hal Needham's folks. This is their big weekend with the new motion picture and all, and, and Gant really wanted to perform. We had breakfast together this morning, and he was telling me that he really thought they were ready for this race. He is trimmed out. He's doing a, a physical exercise program himself, taking two or three inches off his girth. Weighs about the same, about 198. He's, he is a rugged, tough individualist and a very gentle guy at the same time, and I'm sure that he's heartbroken right now as his car is being rolled back, and we hope that Pat Patterson can get a word with Harry Gant. They may be going back to do some work and then attempt to get the car back out. The number nine car, Bill Elliott, Mr. Second Place, six of them, two this year, four last year, second here in the world, 600 a year ago, is currently out in front. The Mark Martin car is really having some handling problems. It is up and down and sideways around the Activision car, but it is staying up here in 10th position at the present time. Let me remind you of up-and-coming Winston Cup Grand National Races. Coming on June 5th, these same cars will be at Riverside, California. It is the 400-kilometer event of the nine-turn road course. Les Richter's great facility, and you folks on the West Coast will have an opportunity to see them there. Then on June the 12th, up to Pocono, Pennsylvania, the Van Scoy Diamond 500. June the 19th, it's the Gabriel 400 on one of my favorite tracks of Brooklyn, Michigan. Always a great competitive event there. And of course, July 4th is another great holiday weekend on America's largest Independence Day celebration at Daytona Beach, Florida for the Firecracker 400. That is July the 4th in Daytona Beach. July the 16th, the field moves on to Nashville, Tennessee for the Bush 420. July 24th at Pocono, Pennsylvania once again for the Mountain Dew 500. July 31st at Talladega, Alabama. And most of those tracks have their ticket offices open today. And if you're interested in great racing, you will never see more competitive racing than you'll see when the Winston flag is unfurled for the Winston Cup coast to coast on this $8 million tour. Number nine car, Bill Elliott, maintaining that lead from Dawsonville, Georgia. Good point just made up here in the tower a moment ago with my my good friend up here who's helping me, Scott Presley. And uh, Scott just made the comment that, uh, and it is very true, that Bill Elliott is one of the few Grand National NASCAR drivers amongst the better sponsored drivers who takes his time, along with his brothers, because it is a family operation, to get under the hood, get under the hood of the car, to push the car out of the pits, into the pits, into the garage area, to work on that car with his family. It is definitely a family operation for those Elliott brothers. The Ingersoll ran championship last year for the uh, pit crew championship. An indication that they do work together to make it a team effort. And overdue, long overdue for a grand national win. Bill Elliott at this moment well on his way. Of course, we're still well away from the end of the race at the lap 400. Now back to Performance Racing Network get to what 256 laps in this race and as Allison came by he was signaling frantically to his pit crew as he came across the start finish line just now frantic waving Chuck Young I know you have a tire story but we want you to get with Bobby Allison's crew something is going on there first what is the tire story Chuck well Ken basically the situation with the tires that Phil Homer of Goodyear told me was you know we had a couple early caution flags and they were going through a lot of tires on the race cars they also found out the teams did that a brand new Goodyear tire will run four to five laps longer and faster than a scuff tire will one that's already been run a little bit so the teams are now taking the tires back to the garage and having new Goodyear's remounted because if it's a shootout to the finish the people who have new rubber and not scuff rubber could be the winners and that could tell the story we're headed to Bobby Allison's pit we'll bring you that story 260 laps coming up shortly with Bill Elliott in front and trying to run him down is Bobby Allison. Pat, Pat Sullivan, uh, Pat Patterson, can you give us any word at all on the, on the situation in the Harry Gant car? Not yet, Ken. We haven't got Harry over here. We've got the trucks blocking our view right now, but we'll get him here just as quickly as possible. 
We'll have an update for you on the Harry Gant Skull Bandit story just as soon as we can. It's still Bill Elliott in command, trying to win that first grand national race. Bobby Allison in second. Richard Petty is in third. Fourth is Neil Bonnet. Fifth is Cale Yarborough. And sixth, in the same lap, he has caught a lap up with some of these pit stops, is Dale Earnhardt. In the seventh spot, a lap down, is Darrell Waltrip. In the eighth position is... And let's check this for just a moment. We're getting some cross signals here on some of these further positions back in the field. Eighth should be, they're, they're reporting Kyle Petty in eighth. Ninth is Mark Martin. Tenth is Buddy Baker. The 11th place, Morgan Shepard. 12th, Lake Speed. 13th, Joe Rutman. Four or more laps down as Dale Earnhardt is pitting. Earnhardt is in. Let's go to Chuck Young. Well, let me give you the story on Bobby first, Ken, and it's into too much detail, but what it was, Trevor Boys in car number 48 was holding Bobby up, and he was waving him to get out of his way, and a uh, rather pretty well good gesture against Trevor because he was being held up. We're headed to Earnhardt's pit, but there is no problem with Bobby Allison, no problem. We'll be back with Earnhardt in a moment. Left side tires on Dale Earnhardt's car, and he is away. Kim Seabrook, once again, Kim, K-I-M, Kim Seabrook. Call extension 201. Kim Seabrook called 201. In car number 67, Dave Marcus is in the 15th spot. Then comes Bobby Hillen. Hillen is running in 16th position. 17th overall in the field is Dean Combs. The 18th position is Sterling Marlin. The 19th position is Bob Seneca. The 20th position is Trevor Boyce. 21st on the field would be Tommy Ellis and 22nd. Getting a report that Ken Reagan, who spun earlier, is now shown as 22nd. The 23rd place car is number 74, Bobby Wolak. The 24th place machine would be Phil Duffy. Running 25th is H.B. Bailey and 26 is Ricky Rudd. Now here is Cale Yarborough coming in and smoke out of the back end. I'm not sure if he locked the brakes up or not, but he is on pit road and he is taking on right side rubber. Ken Squire, the leader, Bill Elliott, and the Melling Oil Pump Thunderbird is down pit road also. And Bobby Allison coming around to retake the lead. Allison coming by. He is back to the stripe. Allison is there. Let's go down to Chuck Young. Well, Bill Elliott has brought, just brought the Melling machine in. They're going for right side tires on the Ford Thunderbird and gasoline. Now, I do believe the smoke coming out of Kale Yarbrough's car is been brake smoke, but we'll go down and get a word. These are scheduled pit stops because, the, you know, we've been under green and the last ones were made at the 200 lap mark, so these are scheduled pit stops, and we'll be back with a story on Kale Yarbrough momentarily. Elliott is back underway. Bobby Allison is leading with 265 laps now complete in the World 600 here at Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's pause for 60 seconds. This is the Performance Racing Network. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the site as we have completed 266 laps at this moment. As Bobby Allison approaches the stripe, he will take the lap leader money of $5,000, second time here today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Number eight car, Bobby Hillen coming into the pits for the moment. Schedule pit stops for most people involved. Number 32 car, Tommy Ellis from Richmond, Virginia in the pits. Richard Petty just coming out of the pit row area just a few moments ago in a very, very tough break day for the Skull Bandit racing team. Earlier on, Benny Parsons having to pull in with problems, and Harry Gant, Harry Gant having to pull his car in, too. So with the premiere of Skull's favorite movie, Stroker Ace, last night at Evans Auditorium, big celebration weekend it will not be a repeat of the National 500 last year, and Harry Gant was not able to pull it off this year. Tough luck for Skull Racing. We're so sorry about that. Now back to Performance Racing Network. In the garage area, work is going on in car number 33. What's the story? What broke on car number 33, Pat Sullivan? Uh, it's a broken A-frame uh, on the car, Ken. The crew is over there feverishly working right now. Harry remains behind the wheel, and I guess they're trying their best to get that car back out on the racetrack. 268 laps complete this time by. We're past the 400-mile mark. 402 miles to go. 
Let's go down to turn number one, Bill Canal. Who looks good to you there? Well, it was Bill Elliott, but of course he was due for a pit stop and uh, went in and relinquished his lead back to Bobby Allison. Allison's had a flawless day. I'm going to agree with Banjo Matthews, as he said to you earlier there in the tower, it very well, even that mixed miscalculation could put Allison in victory circle, but it's a long way home yet. Indeed it is, with four, well, about 200 miles to go, less than 200 miles to go. Seneca has just pitted again and come out, as has J.D. McDuffie. Sterling Marlin is pulling back on the track as Kyle Pitty pits, and also coming in is Darrell Waltrip. Here's Waltrip's number 11, the Pepsi-Cola car, in another time. Not a good day for Waltrip. And here is Chuck Young. And here in the pit, Junior Johnson is jacking Wedge Banjo Matthews in the right rear of the car. And Darrell is down and away now. They took on live left side tires, but Banjo, they Junior Jack Wedge into the right side. Also, left side tires going on Neil Bonnet's car back to the tower. Neil, Neil Bonnet on pit road. They're trying to roll him out, changing left side rubber on Bonnet's automobile. We have six cars on the last report at 260 laps reported in that lead lap. And now again, we're swapping positions on everything but first place. Bobby Allison is in command. Buddy Arrington is pitting the Dodge automobile, number 67. He always does well. It's too bad that he doesn't get more support, Banjo Matthews. Well, I guess, you know, uh, the class <coughs> corporation used to be involved in racing. They went through their financial problems. Uh, the structure of the thing might come back. You see Ford uh, recognize that things have to be happening in the performance. People enjoy it. Aerodynamics is the thing that's going on because of fuel economy. Uh, the looks of cars are changing. So uh, you might see something happen with Chrysler. 270 laps, 405 miles are now complete in the World 600 at Charlotte, North Carolina. Ricky Rudd, who came out here with a great expectations today. He's back on pit road in the Piedmont Airlines car another time as Arrington goes down and gets back into the action. The number 97, that is Ken Reagan out of Unadilla, Georgia, is back out here once again. The Clinament Buick trying another time. Down to turn one. A real battle was going on between Cale Yarbrough and Neil Bonnet as they came through one and two a moment ago. They should be battling for third, the way my calculation has it. Petty would be in second. Allison leading that battle for uh, the third position going on out of turn number two now between Yarbrough and Neil Bonnet as they get ready to go down the back straight away. Cale Yarbrough is leading, but only by mere inches as they pull it off that number two turn and down that 2,000-foot long back straightaway. Yarbrough now with one car length over Bonnet. They stick it in both. They get in deep into turn number three, riding the bottom groove. Let's see if they swing it up high. They do. Yarber goes the lane higher, and looking down at the inside is Bonnet. Here is Bonnet down to the inside across the line with 273 laps complete. They are reporting that we have two cars in the lead, Lap, Allison, and Elliott, and then it's a scramble among the rest, and the scramble's up in turn two. It's downstairs for Neil Bonnet, upstairs for Cale Yarborough, and Cale will go back to fourth position. Bonnet will take over third, down the back straightaway. Uh, I didn't catch it where they got a lap down in the field. I understand they're a lap behind. Bonnet with the National Engineering Chevrolet Monte Carlo with his foot really in it now. Looks the strongest that he has for some time, and it's rolled out to about six, seven cars over Cale. 275 laps, 412 and a half miles complete. As we begin to peer down the other side of the mountain here in this World 600, it's a dandy today as Allison, determined to pull it off and win his third, is caught behind some lap cars. He is now getting a pretty fat advantage on the field. What had been reported and his pit crew seemed concerned about as a, as a premature pit stop is working very much to his advantage, and he has all, better than half a track, almost two-thirds of a track, on the second-place car. We have gone for a considerable length of time with no cautions here. We had four cautions early in the going, a major snarl in turn number two, eliminated uh, Jeff Bodine and his hopes today. Jimmy Means from Alabama was in that crash, and we might again, Pat Patterson, get ready to take a look at a nutrition report. A 270 lap rundown is in, and at 270 laps, 405 miles, it shows that Bobby Allison is leading with the number nine car showing in second, Bill Elliott, 
Then in the third spot, Richard Petty, followed by the 75 and 28, and that seems to be where the action is. Right now, 75 has taken over in fourth and relegated the 28 to the fifth position. That's Cale Yarborough in fifth, then Dale Earnhardt in sixth, Black Down in seventh is Waltrip, eighth, Lake Speed, and the Bullfrog Nits Uno car stays right in it here, although they are two laps down. Ninth spot is Buddy Baker. In the tenth position is car number seven, Kyle Petty. Those are the front ten. And then eleventh is Mark Martin. Twelfth, Morgan Shepard. Thirteenth, Joe Rutman. Fourteenth, five or more laps down is Dave Marcus. Fifteenth is Buddy Arrington. Sixteenth is Bobby Hillen. In seventeenth, Bob Seneker. Eighteenth position is Sterling Marlin, the 19th position at this time is Dean Combs. 20th position belongs to the 48 car, and driving that car is Trevor Boyce. That is the James Hilton automobile. That's the top 20 here as we get up toward 280 laps complete. Mike Joy here with Richard Petty. And Bill Dollar here up in the tower at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, 24th World 600 this afternoon. Again, we want to say a big, big thank you, 7-Eleven, who, after last year, joining in with uh, Harry Gant, the Skull Bandit Racing Team and co-sponsorship, and still continuing to. This year, of course, the sponsorship of the number seven car from Kyle Petty, posting that $50,000 7-Eleven awards, previously uh, eclipsing the previous stock car, uh, stock car lap leader record of $40,000 back from 1977. 279 laps down now, and uh, after the 267, the 500 mile mark approaching the 334 when the final $10,000. 5,000, of course, for the lap leader, and 5,000 for the one leading the most laps during that 100 mile segment as we approach about the two thirds point here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the World 600 this afternoon. Once again, want to remind you that WSOC FM, your NASCAR connection here in Charlotte, carries all the races during the NASCAR season. From Riverside to Dover, all the way down to Daytona, and of course here in Charlotte. And in Charlotte, not only the Grand National Races, the Mellow Yellow 300 yesterday, and it comes this fall, the Miller Time 300 and the Miller 500. Both will be carried on WSOC FM 103, your NASCAR connection here in Charlotte. The number 22 car, Bobby Allison, in the number one slot ahead of Bill Elliott. Bobby and his Die Guard team, in spite of a uh, early, early pit stop earlier in the race this afternoon, scheduled much later and then called earlier for the Die Guard crew. At the time, proved inopportune, but with advantage has been taken in the meantime, and Bobby Allison back in the lead with the Die Guard team, Miller High Life, Quaker State. Miller, Miller High Life, Bobby Allison Buick, that has been doing so well this afternoon. Gary Nelson and his crew down there has just done an exceptional job this year for their first year of sponsorship under Miller High Life. And leading the pace now at 282 laps, Bobby Allison in that number one slot. Back to PRN. In the course of the World 600. Here is Dale Earnhardt in another time with a bit more Wrangler car. And here's Chuck Young. Well, Ken Squire, we were just checking on the pit stop situation. Bud Moore now reaches in, puts some wedge, it appears, in the right rear of the car as they're going with right side tires on the Wrangler machine. Up to this point, and Dale is down away very quickly. Earnhardt was leading the Ingersoll Rand pit crew standings by four seconds over Buddy Baker. Third is Bill Elliott, and fourth is Neil Bonnet. Once again, Earnhardt leading the pit crew standings back to the top. A rumpled Activision car is on pit road for Mark Martin. It slapped the wall up in turn three and four. And with that story, here's Hal Overton. We just noticed Mark come down pit road just a moment ago. Smoke erupting from the right side of that 0-1 automobile driven by Mark. Uh, it appears he did pretty well rub the side of the car over onto the tires. He got into the wall a grazing blow, not all that hard, and he should be able to continue, but I'm certain at a reduced rate of speed. Well, crab-like, the car crawls back into the garage area now, number 01. Mark Martin, thank you for the report, Hill, and that's the story at 284. Now, we've run some 143 laps without a caution flag here in the World 600 in Charlotte. As we come to 285, here's the situation. Bobby Allison is first. 
Bill Elliott is still in second place. Will he ever get out of second place? Are you ready to stop being the second place man in these races, Bill Elliott? I hope so. It's, it's been a rough year, and you know, I've had a couple of second place finishes already this year, and I just hope I can do it here. You know, I'm so close, and I was so close the last two races here at Charlotte that maybe I can pull it off this race. Well, if he's going to pull it off, he has got to deal with Bobby Allison, who shows no signs of relenting in his effort to win his third World 600. Allison has a big, fat advantage as we move toward the last 100 laps of competition today. Here's Bill Connell. Well, Dale Earnhardt came through turns one and two a while ago, and Earnhardt must have the right combination of tires on this time. He's going to try to get some of those laps back. He's on Bobby Allison's bumper and trying to manipulate his way back to the inside of Allison, get back up a lap or so, and uh, be in the thick of the hut once we get into those final 100 laps of competition. Dale Earnhardt right on Bobby Allison's bumper out of two. D.K. Ulrich back on pit road. Let's go on to the back straightaway. And down that back chute they come. Allison shows about three cars over Earnhardt as he has a lot of acceleration left. Engine built strong in that stable, the Dygard stable by Robert Yates. Of course, the team crew chief by Gary Nelson. What a beautiful job they do. But here comes Earnhardt, nevertheless, down in the bottom groove. Earnhardt working very quickly comes up on Allison. Remember, Earnhardt is running one lap down, and he's trying to pull that lap back as they go into the first and second turn area. Earnhardt, again, chews away on Bobby Allison, and coming up with him is Buddy Baker in the Wood Brothers' Vaveline-prepared Thunderbird. They're down off the number two, kind of corner down the back chute, and Dale Earnhardt could put a move on it, three and four. Well, they see just a little over 100 laps remaining, and people have been uh, biding their time just a little bit through the mid-laps, but you can see now it's go time, and they're going for it. Earnhardt takes the high groove, following Allison, knows the tail off the floor. I was in error a moment ago. I told you that Earnhardt was a lap down. He is now shown as two laps down. Dale Earnhardt is showing two laps down in this race. Allison first, Elliott second, Richard Petty a lap down in third. In that same lap in fourth is Neil Bonnet and Kelly Yarborough maintaining the fifth position. Well, as matters stand here, this looks like Wayne Boyles. Wayne Boyles, please go to the restroom on the East Grandstand to pick up your boy, Steve. Wayne Boyles, go to the restroom at the East Grandstand and pick up your boy, Steve. Wayne Boyles. Right now, unless things change, I would see we're going to run second or first again. The Bobby Allison Buick. The Dygard car for Miller High Life. Those white and red colors stay out in front. The second place, the violent red and white numeral number nine of Bill Elliott, the Ford Thunderbird in second. Ford trying to turn their fortunes around in this World 600. And Elliott, race after race, just proves again and again how good he is because he just doesn't overextend himself. He stays within bounds and drives so well and you know that this young Georgia driver has such potential here there's no such thing as a, a jinx or a, a bad year on him he just keeps getting better and he has to win sooner or later oh yeah it, it's coming you know his team's good uh, the people are nice they organize themselves good uh, that's coming with Elliot you know he might not win this week but one of these days it's coming repeating at Indianapolis, Tom Sneva, victorious by 11 seconds. Good finish at Indy today. Sneva first, Al Unser second, Rick Mears in third position at the end of the Indianapolis Classic. At this great traditional battle in North Carolina, the sun is out after a rather dark start, and we have some 130,000 folks in attendance enjoying the 24th Annual World 600. I'm Ken Squire, and along with Bill Connell and Banjo Matthews, Hale Overton, Chuck Young, Pat Patterson, and Darling Dixon, we're delighted to have you join us to follow another of America's great memorial traditions, the World 600 in North Carolina, which has been a high watermark for the World 600 this year. A motion picture premiere last night with Burt Reynolds and Wani Anderson and Jim Neighbors in attendance, a packed capacity house for charity here last night in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today, this great race, and yesterday, a wonderful race in which Dale Earnhardt came home victorious driving the Robert G. car. Right now. Kim Seabrook. Kim Seabrook. Kim Seabrook, who was on the Town and Country Ford float today. Kim Seabrook, please call extension 201. Kim Seabrook called 201.
Thank you. But turn number one, Allison really showing some strength. Down at turn number one just moments ago, Neil Bonnet got the wall. Look out, Cale Yarbrough did the same as if we watched him out on the back straightaway in three and four. Let's go up the hill over to him. These drivers have been getting into that wall more and more. As we mentioned earlier, their groove has moved up steadily throughout the afternoon, and now they just literally graze that wall for three and four every time as Ricky Rudd and Dave Marcus come off with an inches of the wall. What used to be known as the Darlington crease on the side of the cars may become the, the Charlotte indicator of the same thing. A little sash down the side of the cars where you get right up and run against the concrete here in the third and fourth turn on the outside of that 17 degree banking. We're going to pause two minutes to allow our local stations to bring you these messages and then back up oh, here comes Harry Gant. Number 33 is coming back out. We'll give him an A for effort. Remember that Harry Gant is very much in the hunt for the point standing. He is back on the track fighting for first place with Bobby Allison, the national championship. More on that story after this two-minute break. We'll be back with more of the action after this message. This is the Performance Racing Network. Once again, it's very, very good to see Harry Gant back on the pace once again here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway this afternoon, losing several laps this afternoon. Evidently, it was some sort of front-end suspension problem. Still no report from the pit area on that yet or from the garage. But hopefully by the time we rejoin Performance Racing Network, we'll find out exactly what did occur. But apparently there was some sort of front end suspension problem. The steering just was not compatible with what Harry wanted to do on the speedway this afternoon. So the 33 Skull Bandit as approaches the stripe is back in the pack again right next to uh, the number three Piedmont car of Ricky Rudd. Charlotte Motor Speedway, 24th running. The World 600 Charlotte Motor Speedway race, lap 296 approaching. Three-fourths of the race complete this afternoon in just a few moments. Still leading. That Dygard Racing Buick from Miller, number 22 for Bobby Allison. And in that lead lap, also just the two cars of Bobby Allison and the Dawsonville, Georgia gang of the Elliots. Bill Elliott, the number nine. Back of lap, 43, Richard Petty, Neil Bonnet, Cale Yarbrough, the top five, still competes for the money and the title of the 24th World 600. You know the celebration this weekend with that premiere. Richard Petty coming into the pits. Richard Petty, it's about time for Richard to make a schedule pit stop here. The number 43 SCP Pontiac losing some precious time right here, being a lap back at this moment anyway behind the lead pace, but taking on some right side rubber. Brody Blackwell, go to the Cabarrus Hospital, sign the release for your son. Brody Blackwell, go to the Cabarrus Hospital, sign a release for your son. Richard Petty coming out. Richard Petty coming out. Number 99 car, Philadelphia, Augusta, Georgia. And the Gravel Buick for U.S. Duffy is coming in. Gravel Buick U.S. is coming into the pits area at the moment. Scheduled pit stops due for several drivers at the moment as we approach the 300 lap mark here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway this afternoon and what has turned out to be a real good day for racing, somewhat humid, but thank goodness the rain that we were threatened with this morning did pass by us and we're back into racing for the Performance Racing Network list on those who have retired from the 1983 World 600. Numerically, Ken, from the top to bottom here, 16, David Pearson out of it, uh, Mark Martin up at the top, Tim Richmond in car number 27, 44, Terry Labonte, 47, Ron Bouchard, uh, 52, Jimmy Means, Benny Parsons in 55, 64, Tommy Gale, 70, J.D. McDuffie, he may or may not be back out on the track, we're not, I haven't been able to check, uh, Bob Seneker, car number 80, uh, 88 of Jeff Bodine, and number 90 of Dick Brooks at this point at the race. Coming around for a completion of 450 miles, 300 laps complete in the World 600. Bobby Allison first, Bill Elliott is second. Let's go to Darlene Dixon. Darlene Dixon here in the press room, and I have a gentleman here with a grin on his face from ear to ear, that's Hugh Morton of Grandfather Mountain, chairman of the Governor's Advisory Committee on Travel and Tourism. We certainly have had travel and tourism flourishing this weekend, Hugh. We have, and I've been very impressed with everything I've seen. Back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the 1983 World 600 with Charlie Harville and Bill Parsons. I'm Ken Squire, along with 137,000 others. Watch Bill Elliott commanding this race, trying to win his first Grand National event. Now here's the man that's won twice in the Mellow Yellow 300, one of the sportsman races held at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Fitting his automobile, he's been running well all day, but right now seems to be falling back some. He has dropped down on lap. Morgan Shepard in car number two. The leader, Bill Elliott, number nine. 
combined for that first Grand National win. Same thing you're trying to do, Phil Parsons. That's right. And you know, Bill Elliott last year in the World Series was probably the biggest disappointment of his career, losing that race. Charlie Harville is standing by in the garage with Harry Gant, car number 33. Harry, what happened? Well, we uh, I brushed the wall down the first turn earlier. I guess it broke something on the car, the A-frame or something. It didn't really drive as good, and I was going down the back stretch. Right before I got ready to go in the third turn, something broke, and the car turned right. I guess it was lucky it didn't hit the fence so hard. Again, the reason Harry was staying in the car is they were probably trying to fix it and get him back out to chase points that are so valuable in this Winston Cup Tour. Harry Gann is currently number two in the national standing. Winston Cup Tour, Bobby Allison is in another time. Now, earlier, Allison made that pit stop, and we found out that Gary Nelson apparently called him in prematurely. He called him in about 30 laps earlier than he intended as you watch Judy Allison there overlooking her husband's pit stop. So Allison is running out of sync with the rest of the field, Phil. That's true, Ken. He's about 30 laps different from the rest of the field as far as pitting goes. The leader at the present time is Bill Elliott. Here he comes in. Elliott pitting. Bill Elliott coming onto pit road, and this will give the lead to Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet, number 75, the man who won it a year ago, back out in front. Elliott, his two brothers, part of his pit crew down there. Beth Ernie and Dan Elliott, Kim, they were the pit crew champions for the entire year last year. At Ingersoll Rand Program, one of the most successful things along pit road. Elliott is back out, but Bonnet has inherited first place here in the 1983 World 600. He will be due for a pit stop sometime soon, Kim, so he will give the lead back to either Allison or Elliott. Bill Elliott coming up to full speed, pulling back on the track. He is in second, and there is third place, Bobby Allison. There is Elliott in the second position. Bonnet deployed well out in front of them in the lead, but he'll have to pitch shortly. And right behind this number nine comes Bobby Allison in third place. There's less than two seconds differential between second and third right now, Kim. Bill Elliott in the second. There's Bobby Allison crawling along, trying to catch up with that car number nine. Um, just briefly there, he's putting some laps on some other cars here. Problems with uh, the Dale Earnhardt car, gonna put him a lap down. Here's Bobby Allison still closing, still very much in the hunt, and Bill Elliott lapping Dave Marcus, never in better shape to win one. That very important first one than here. There's Tommy Ellis on pit road, Kenny's one of my very tough sportsman competitors. Bill Parsons working with us today, just off a very bad injury at Talladega, Alabama, but getting ready to get back on this Winston Cup tour. Again, I've been lifting weights with my arm. I've been doing physical therapy, and I really cannot wait to get back on this circuit. Well, anyone that saw those horrible 180, 190 mile an hour barrel rolls of that car of yours, six and a half times at Talladega, wonders why anyone would want to get back in the car. There's your leader on pit road, Ken. But these kind of guys that run these races, that's just part of the game. Here is Neil Bonnet, winner last year of the World 600, back on pit road, and now we have a battle for first place. Bobby Allison to the inside. He is caught up and is trying to run down. Bill Elliott, he's getting by him. Looks like he's going to drive right through him here. Bobby has run him down from two or three seconds behind, so he must have a superior car at this point. Well, here comes Elliott back. It looks like Bobby Allison had everyone covered, but now on the outside, Bill Elliott finds additional life. And here he is fighting Allison wheel to wheel. Bobby Allison, number 22, the white and red car on the inside. The red and white car on the outside is Bill Elliott. Bill's a very tough competitor, and he's hanging in there, and he does not want to give the lead up because he gave it up last year to Neil Bonnet and could not regain it. So he's going to stay in there and fight tooth and nail with Bobby Ellison for the lead. You can bet you on that. Neil Bonnet won it last year with Bill Elliott second, Bobby Allison third. Will it come down the same way this year? Here they are, back another time, and what a dog fight we have for the lead. Elliott tenaciously holding on to the outside. Allison trying to take away that position that Elliott is scrambling to hold on to. You know, Bobby can come back from two seconds behind, but the cars seem to be equal right now. There's that third place car, Neil Bonnet, number 75, lurking, just waiting back there in that third spot in case anything goes to miss on those two leaders. Richard Petty is deployed fourth. The leaders come down across the start finish line before this massive 130,000 plus congregation and they're still side by side, still wheel to wheel. Allison down low, Elliott up high. 
this is tremendous racing for this late in the race, and you would think after 500 and some miles that there wouldn't be much left, but they, I think they've saved back some for this last portion of the race. Wrestling these 3,700 pound cars back into the banking. The cars, oh, getting a little high that time with Dallas, but for the obvious reason, the black traffic in front, there's trouble. A car is front directly in front, Allison is gone. Elliot has crashed. Another car is in the altercation. Bill Elliott's car is all torn up in the front. Bobby Allison has crashed. He's further up the track. Here's Elliott still trying to run, but slowly. His car number nine coming to a halt down on pit road. What a horrible break for Bill Elliott. Bobby Allison trying to get by or trying to get started. Here he comes down in the Miller High Life car. Unfortunate thing in front of them, the Roger Hamby, number 17, being driven by Sterling Marlin, apparently blew an engine, and the leaders had no place to go but into disaster. Bill Parsons, let's review that incident. It looks like Sterling Marlin, who is out of the picture right now, blew an engine. The two slow cars slowed abruptly, which forced Bill Elliott to run into the slow car and knocked him up into Bobby Allison. That other red and white car with Slick Johnson in the altercation. Bill Elliott is ruptured an oil cooler here. Let's look again at another replay of what happened there. You see Allison getting up by a lap car, realizing there's trouble in front. Gets on the binders. And with no place to go, Elliott runs into the back of Slick Johnson, tears up the front of his car. Slick Johnson bounces off Bobby Allison. And that's going to set up Richard Petty and Neil Bonnet to battle for the finish. My music keeps me going in more ways than one. If I'm not riding to a concert, I'm flying to one. So I really appreciate Relax. Just me and my Skoll. Skoll's wintergreen flavor is number one with me. Just a pinch gives me real tobacco pleasure without lighting up anytime, anywhere. Mr. Daniel, smoking or non-smoking? Smokeless, darling. Go smokeless with Skoll or Copenhagen. A pinch is all... A caution flag late in the 1983 World 600 will give us new leaders and give us a chance to see a different perspective on this World 600. The World 600 is more than a race. It's a week-long festival that raises thousands of dollars for North Carolina charities. The highlight, the Mayor's Ball, a black tie social event of the year that draws some 1,200 to rub elbows with racing stars and some stars from the entertainment world as well nice to sit back with some racing folks and say why do you do it over roast beef and champagne just walk up and pose a couple of questions to a guy like phil parsons or richard brooks or have bobby allison at your table or joe rutman ask a hal needham a bubba smith or a jim neighbors about their new motion picture that world premiered here stroker race it may be black tie in charlotte north carolina but the entertainment always reflects the roots of american stock car racing we're back on the green. We can look for a sprint to the finish again. With Allison and Bill Elliott both knocked out of that crash in turn four, Richard Petty's number 43 now leads with Neil Bonnet in second. Bobby Allison has come back on the track and is running in third in the same lap with the leaders, Richard Petty and Neil Bonnet. But his car is not handling anywhere near like it was at the start. Bad, terrible break for Bobby Allison. Here's Richard Petty seeking his 198th career win. All of a sudden, he's back on top with Neil Bonnet in that second position. In the fourth position overall is Darrell Waltrip. Fifth is Earnhardt. As we watch Neil Bonnet closing on Richard Petty, getting ready to move in, trying to take that first place away and win this race two years back to back. There's Allison running in third spot. And whoa, up in front, Neil Bonnet is making the charge. He's down the inside. He's pulling along. He's going by Richard Petty. It's Neil Bonnet in the first, Richard Petty in second place, Bill Parsons. Both Neil Bonnet and Richard Petty have not been running strong the entire race. They were, as a matter of fact, they both were a lap down to the leaders when the crash happened. But you never know in stock racing what might happen. You have to hang in tough, stay there and run 600 miles, and you never know where you might end up. The World 600 before some 137,000 here in Charlotte, North Carolina, with a new leader. Neil Bonnet, number 75, he has not won a race since here in Charlotte a year ago. Richard Petty has already won two Grand National races in 1983 in that STP Pontiac, number 43. But now he's falling back to Neil Bonnet, dramatically falling back. 
Yes, Kenneth. So about a second, two tenths right now. Differential between first and second. In the sixth position, Lake Speed. Seventh is Buddy Baker, who set on the pole. And Baker has not run well since the very beginning in that Wood Brothers Valvoline car. The eighth spot is Kyle Petty. Ninth is Morgan Shepard. Tenth right now is Dave Marcus. And eleventh is 18-year-old Bobby Hillen Jr. Out of, out of Midland, Texas, who graduated from high school two nights before this event. There's Allison, still in third, still out there trying, leading in the national point standing. Here's the overall leader of the world, 600. Neil Bonnet seeking the 12th win of his career. He first came here in 1977, finished 35th. Did not have much luck the first two or three times he came to Charlotte, but then last year drove to a brilliant victory, and now he's trying to duplicate the feat. Richard Petty, he's won here on two previous occasions. Richard Petty, the winner in 1975 and 1977 of the World 600. Here's Bonnet driving for Warner Hodgson in 1983, moving to the Junior Johnson team, still carrying the Warner Hodgson colors in 1984. A year away, that's going to be some combination because also in that same stable, of course, is Darrell Waltrip. Now here's Bonnet, flapping cars as time is running out. It looked like Allison and Bill Elliott were going to battle right to the wire. Then disaster overtook them in the fourth turn. Bill Parsons, why do people race? Why do you keep on going out and doing it? He had a terrible crash in Talladega, one of the most dramatic, awful-looking things we've seen this year. We've seen two or three bad crashes. What brings a person back out to cinch up a seatbelt after something like that? Well, Ken, it's something I've always wanted to do as long as I can remember. That's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. I could not imagine what I would do if I didn't drive a race car, so I'm not going to let a little accident like that uh, keep me from doing what I want to do. 180 miles an hour, end over end, and side over side. Little, it was very little. <laughs> Sound just like your brother. Here's number 75, Neil Bonnet, still leading. Phil Parsons with us today. His brother, Benny Parsons, former national champion, won this event back in 1980. Anybody that runs here at Charlotte can tell you this is a world of hard knocks. But there is some glory to it, and there is some money. There's the man up to $5 million in purses earned, not counting sponsorship money. Richard Petty, number 43. Neil Bonnet, youngest member of the Alabama gang, protege of Bobby Allison. Looked for a while early in the race as if those two were going to go fender to fender to flail it out here today. Then it looked like Allison was going to dominate so many dramatic changes in this World 600. But that's the history of this race since Jolie Johnson first won it 24 years ago. Next year, the 25th anniversary of the World 600. Again, there's only three laps to go, and the separation is a shade under two seconds. It doesn't look like Richard's going to be able to catch him. Richard Petty trying to get back into this thing, holding on. They say that engine is not sounded right. There's a dramatic story on Neil Bonnet's car today. He would not be out here running if it hadn't been for a chief mechanic on one of his opposition, Buddy Parrott, heard something on that car out on the pit road this morning, heard something break on it. And sure enough, he looked under the car, he found a washer beneath the car, he reported it to their crew, and they were able to make a repair, and here they are with two laps to go, leading the race. But had it not been for Buddy Parrott, the crew chief for Joe Rutman, this car wouldn't be out here right now. That's a very sportsmanlike gesture, Ken, and that's the kind of people we have in racing. That's why it's so much fun and so much enjoyment to be in this business. Buddy Parrott, the man who is keeping, really, Neil Bonnet in the hunt, late in the going. Tremendous sportsmanship. Down toward the end, a lap and a half away from this race, as we mentioned, next year is the 25th anniversary World 600, and Charlotte has been making plans for two years for that occasion already. And, of course, in October, in October, as the white flag comes out, the Miller High Life 500 will be run here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Last year, a tremendous race that was won by Harry Gant. Under the white flag, down for the final lap. And Neil Bonnet must be counting his blessings. A valve cover retainer washer was what broke what another man heard. You'd think those mechanics would be deaf after all those years to hear something as minute as that, Bill. When it's something that important, kid, you can always reach back for a little extra hearing or anything. Here comes Neil Bonnet down. Richard Petty has closed up some. As we get down to the finish, it will be a checkered flag. Two years in a row. Neil Bonnet pulls it off and wins the near half a million.
dollar world 600 on the mile and a half charlotte motor speedway there you see his crew there is tuckered out as the driver must be as the car is coming in headed for victory lane charlie harville will be there with neil bonnet to find out how one feels after 600 torturous miles on this high bank high speed super speedway at charlotte north carolina and we'll be back to meet the winner after this Neil, turn around, would you? Hey, here we go. Okay, Neil Bonnet in Victory Lane. Neil, did you have any problems during the day? Well, I was in a couple of close calls, and, you know, I, I hate to see those guys up front have problems like that, but I've been leading this thing before and thought I had it put away and have an accident or something. Maybe we're just getting one of them back, you know, with about 15 laps to go. I was trying to put a little distance on Richard. I saw him coming, and I bounced it off the wall pretty hard up there, one and two, and it kind of surprised me it kept going. You and Richard both had to drive hard during the last few laps. I tell you what, uh, on the stopwatch, we were running a lot faster than I thought we could run. He was bearing down on me. Richard, one heck of a competitor, and I knew very well he was coming after me. I think it's a tribute to your team to win like this right after you lost your crew chief, too. Well, I tell you what, the Sway Mock operation with Butch Mock building the motors did super. Uh, Butch, I mean, Bob Healy on the motors, Butch Mock on the chassis, they're doing one heck of a job with the car. It's very enjoyable. Back to you, Ken. The 24th World 600 will be remembered as a race in which fate played a major hand. Down at the finish, Phil Parsons coming out of turn number four. Bill Elliott, Bobby Allison getting snarled on Roger Hamby's car as we look and replay at what happened there. Sterling Marlin in the Hamby car just ahead of the leaders blew an inch, blocked the track. Slow car slowed abruptly. The leaders had nowhere to go. So Neil Bonnet comes home victorious today. Bonnet is first. Richard Petty second. Bobby Allison relegated to third. And Bill Elliott finally came across in the 16th position. A final thought from you, Phil Parsons. Well, Neil Bonnet didn't seem to be in contention, but with the altercation between Bobby Allison and Bill Elliott, he proved that he may give out, but he'll never give up. That's the story. Warner Hodgson coming home with his car number 75. Neil Bonnet at the controls to win the near half million dollar World 600. For Phil Parsons and Charlie Harville at Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm Ken Squire. From Charlotte Motor Speedway, you've just seen the 1983 Charlotte World 600, America's longest closed course auto race. The World 600 was brought to you by Old Milwaukee Beer and Old Milwaukee Light, two of America's great tasting beers. It doesn't get any better than this and by STP, around the track, around the world. Depend on STP proven performance. Mislu Motorsports coverage continues with the Van Scoy 500 from Pocono, Pennsylvania on many of these same stations. Check your local listing for station and time in your area.